Okay. Okay. Good afternoon, everybody. It's uh, Monday, October 16th, 2017, and we're meeting at the uh, Montgomery County Board of Elections, and it is uh, 2.31. We have a quorum, so we're going to begin our meeting with uh, the approval of the minutes from the September 18th, 2017 board meeting. Uh, is there a motion? To I move we accept the minute as amended. amended. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Uh, Mr. President, I just had one question. I know Mr. Naiman had proposed an edit about Senator Kagan's comments. Um, and I, I would ask Mr. Naiman, do you, don't you think, though, that Senator Kagan actually does or did oppose St. Catherine Labore? Uh, no. And I listened, to the, uh, I listened to the recording. In fact, she used words like consider and all that multiple times. So um, I, I do think that she expressed strong views, but um, I don't think that she spoke in opposition. And in fact, I mean, this was made after listening to the recording. This was not um, my own recollection of what she said. I mean, I guess before we got the message today, I would have assumed, based on her comments from last meeting, that she would have voted. Uh, I don't know if anyone agrees with her. Well, I, mean, I know she made a kind of a generic statement uh, discussing her concerns about using a religious facility for early voting. I don't recall if she specifically mentioned that site. Okay. I know she spoke she, in she, general. She, she definitely did not specifically say oppose, because I, I, mean, I mean, that's that's why. She was concerned, though. It was not I, mean, I, I, I should tell you, I, it may not appear to you this way, but every time I re read the minutes, I don't go in assuming that I have to change things. I go in l listening to what the recording said. Um, and and uh, in this instance, the recording reflected that she said she was speaking on behalf of the other senators and that she had a concern, um, but that sh she did not say that um, um, that she was opposed to any particular site. But her concerns were about uh, the uh, St. Catherine Labore site. I, I don't believe that she said that they were about the St. Catherine Labore site. I think that she stated them in the generic, although obviously I think that's what she was talking about. Oh, yeah. I mean, the inference was in opposition. And then, of course, we got the message today that that she is no no longer has that concern. Correct. Or did you want to make a, a change? Uh, I'm not, I don't necessarily think I want to make a change, but I, I guess I just wanted to give other board members sense that Regardless of what she expressly said, I think the meaning that she conveyed was pretty clear that if we had asked her then, she would have opposed it. But I guess well, not. I agree with you. That was definitely position. her sentiment, I thought. Are, are, are we going to have the minutes characterizing people's views like that? No, we're not. There's no, no move to amend, right? Uh, no. 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 Okay, any other discussion? All those in favor of approving the September 18th meeting minutes, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay. That's approved. I don't think we have any changes or additions to the agenda. We do have a need for an executive session, Mr. President, for the purpose of... Of? Well, I'm sorry. Future budget. Oh, future. Oh, future budget. I'm sorry, can we go back to the minutes? We have the public hearings minutes that were distributed with Margaret's report. Do we need to hold that off for next month, or does the board we, we, want to? We just, uh, the minutes, we just voted no, approval. No, the public no, hearing. The public hearing, hearing, the public hearing at the... At the, at the oh, 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 oh. I, I'd rather put them off if we can, but it's up to others. I set them out Friday night. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's just a reiteration of the testimonies of the various individuals. Yeah, it's just the testimonies of the individuals. Jackie, Alex, you have a thoughts? Nahim? Well, maybe we could approve them subject yeah. to, you know, reopening to amend if next month somehow we, we find that there's something that's, you know, we, we, we got them a week after we're supposed to get them. Um, and I thought that we, I, I, I mean, and I realized that they're not the same as our meeting minutes, but I thought that we're supposed to have time to review them. Okay. We can okay. put, we can put I'll it with, uh, I'll put it next month, whatever. Lisa, can, you, can we just put those on the next month? Yeah. Okay. Kevin, can I just, I just want to clarify, do the minutes actually have to be approved okay. by the board? Because yeah. it wasn't like the meeting wasn't it didn't open it but it was a was meeting a quorum, it, it wasn't adjourned no. there was no closure to the meeting it was, it, it was a, there was a quorum did it, but there it didn't, then and it, didn't it would close. be best to have them approved no. and i would suggest you wait until next month if okay. the board members have not had a chance to read yeah okay, okay. lisa Thank you put put okay. that on the next month yes agenda? absolutely okay 
So we're going to have a uh, executive session. Okay. Are there any public comments, Lisa? Let me check. No one called in advance to address the board, and no one here today has indicated that they would like to address the board. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So now we're going to go to the selection of our 11 early voting sites and three alternate early voting centers. Kevin, do we have to do one at the one at the time, or we can do it all together? How, I forgot. How did we do? You can do a motion selecting 11 of them. Or 11 of them? I just read the thing. Correct. Okay, I you move. Have, all right, Nahid has a motion. I'm, and I'm going to read the name: Damascus Community Center, Germantown. Activity Center at Borough Park in Gatesburg, Executive Office Building, Rockville, Potomac Community Center, Potomac, Jane Lawton Community Center, Chevy Chase, Silver Spring Civic Center, Silver Spring, Berlin President Center, Burtonsville, Mid County, Silver Spring, St. Catherine Laboratory Church, Wheaton, Sandy Spring Fire Department, Sandy Spring. Did you mention Germantown? Yeah, Germantown, yeah. Germantown, Germantown Community Center. Alternate Longwood Community Center, Brookville, Nancy Dasick Center, North Potomac, White Oak, Silver Spring. We always have Board of Election. We use them as a site. Okay, so we have, those are, the, those are your... Uh, Ms. Koza, I'm sorry, could you repeat those one more time? Which one? I'll give you this one. Oh, okay. Yeah. All of them? Thank you. Which I, That's I, fine. I, I, I will be the list. Can you tell me the alternates yeah, again? Yeah, alternates I'm sorry. Longwood, Longwood Community Rec Center, Brookville. Nancy Basic Center in North Potomac, White Oak, and Silver Spring. White Oak. Go ahead. No, these finish, are, up, finish up saying them. These are the alternates. And Board of Election, which we always do, Board of Election. Okay. A movie accept this site. Is there a second? I second. Okay. Any discussion? Did you want? Well, the author gets to go first if she wants to. Hmm? Any discussion? Yeah, you picked a lot of new places here. Do you, you want, want to do discuss it? Do you want to discuss it? What, what do you want me to discuss it? I wanted to go all over the county, not just one particular area. We are covered, we are in Damascus, we are in Germantown, we are in Gatesburg, Rockville, Potomac, Chevy Chase, Silver Spring, Burtonville, Silver Spring twice, Sandy Spring, and then the alternate, we never use them, but Brookville, North Potomac, and Silver Spring, the White Oak. It certainly covers the county. Yes, we just covered the county. And the reason, the reason, just for the public, the, the reason we're selecting another site in Wheaton is because we can't use the Wheaton site we used last time, correct? Yes. So that's why St. Catherine's is, is yes. on your list? Is that the church? Is the school the beside Claridge, the It's called the Claridge Room, I believe, right? Yeah. yeah. You don't know the name Claridge Room? Claridge, yeah. uh-huh. Yeah, that's But that was the selected building. because we couldn't use the site we used last time. Right. And so the so two new ones then we would We went be to Britain, but we selected a different... Uh, location for Wheaton. So the two new sites would be uh, in Olney, Sandy Spring. Is that only is the and um, Sandy Spring is the Sandy Spring, the area they call them Sandy yes, Spring. Yes, yes. Okay. okay. It's, well, it's all it's, it, it's all in Olney. Yes. Yeah. And the other new site is the, the Saint Saint Catherine Labora. We kept all the nine and add the Saint Catherine Labora and also Sandy Spring. Right. Volunteer fire department. Mary? Uh, I'd, I'd like to uh, first address the alternate uh, site oh, and um, uh, Longview. Longwood. It, Longwood, I'm sorry, that you, that you, uh, that you added to this, which has not been, uh, been one in the past. Um, you know, we had quite a bit of discussion regarding that site when it came up as a possibility for uh, for an early voting site, and it uh, it is not deemed appropriate, uh, especially from the standpoint of accessibility to people. Unless you drive, you can't. You, it's you know virtually impossible to, to the go list. there. This is part of the list of the proposed early, vo early voting site, which uh, uh, comply with the criteria which we follow. 
this is part of that, that list. I, I know. We have, a whole lot, we have a whole lot of sites and there, and we've discussed this site. Alternate, um, as far as I remember, we never use alternate site, as far as I remember. Margaret, did you ever use alternate site all these years? So no. far, no. Yeah. No, but we could use alternate sites, and that's the whole purpose of having them. Otherwise, why would we go through this process? And uh, I do not, I do not feel it is an acceptable site. And um, I, I guess I'm curious as to why you dropped um, sites that we used before. The one that's not on here now. Unacceptable we to who? Um, to you? That because you don't like it, we have to drop that. Or unacceptable because no, it doesn't he, satisfy is the criteria which we follow. Why is not unacceptable? That I like to know. I just, uh, if you had stopped to listen instead of I, interrupting I me, you, you might have uh, heard this, me say, this is I don't find it acceptable and haven't every time it's come up as, as a, uh, a, a site suggestion is because of the difficulty in uh, people getting to it, the accessibility of the site itself. Unless you drive, it is, it's virtually impossible to, to go there. And we try to find, and we're supposed to find, uh, sites that have accessibility to all kinds of people. People can come, of course, from all over the county. They would be driving to a site outside their area. But when we look, as you take great pains to point out the map and putting sites where people live, you want to have a place that people can walk to. And the site that we've chosen in Olney, I think we, uh, we haven't selected it yet, but I think one, one of the primary reasons that we prefer that one is because it does have more accessibility to where people are. And um, Longwood just doesn't uh, meet that criteria. What would you say? Do you have a suggestion? Uh, I suggest that we go back to, uh, to, the, Long Branch. to the one that, uh, that we had before, Long Branch. Who did we have last time? I forget. Uh -huh. I believe it was the Long Branch in the upper county. We only um, had two the last time. We're adding a third was, one was, this was, time. I think it's, I can't remember the name of it, the one in Gaithersburg. Uh, it's the upper county um, Rec recreation center. center. And Long Branch Community Center. Long Branch and then this location. Long Branch is And what? Where? Long Branch. Oh, and okay. the uh, upper so county community Kansas recreation. Yes. Of Emory Grove and, uh, we didn't use White Oak. No, then then if we select Long Branch, I will draw White Oak Community Center because they're so close. We cannot have all in Silver Spring Beaton area. We're not, we're not advocating that they're all be in the Silver Spring. If we area. select Long Beach, I will draw White Oak Community Center because they're close, they're both in Silver Spring area. Who, who would you substitute for that? Long Branch. Well, she's saying that she would withdraw White Oak. Right, and but, that's, but that doesn't, that doesn't, doesn't address, address Marianne's <laughs> concern about Longwood. Longwood is the one that so, I, you so, know. So another, another option for an alternative to Longwood is Bower Drive, because that is a space, that is a place that a lot of people in the only area drive past on, in places that they go, um, whereas Longwood is almost two miles north of 108, um, and in, really in Brookville. Pierre said, based on the staff which they work, he said, Longwood Community Center, that's how I follow, has a, a Mid County Longwood. They have 6,000 square foot, they have 53 a.m. p.m. Uh, parking, everything is yes, yes, ADA approved and everything. Mm -hmm. And it's right off Georgia Avenue and Route 97. And there are Georgia Avenue is Route 97. Huh? Georgia Avenue is Route 97. Yeah, I'm saying yeah. that it's right off Georgia Avenue. Yes. I mean, it's their list. Just suggested this is one. Well, of if the you're list. going to remove uh, Mid County, the one no, that she, she's, she's not removing Mid County. Mid County is there. Mid County. She's All keeping, nine sides they've, they've is removed, there. They've removed the Upper County Community Center. That was a, a that was an alternate site. Right. Last last time, last time it was Upper County Community Center and Long Branch. Right. And, and but what I heard, I thought she wanted to add Longwood 
right. and, and white, oak. white oak. Right. She's moving. She's moving the long branch one. I guess she's viewing those as being comparable. Well, they are yeah. close yeah. together. Yes. Uh, and uh, uh, but but longwood is on top of of, of Sandy Spring. Um, and if there's some reason somebody, I mean, Upper County, I I think makes sense. But I I also I like Bar Drive. It's right there. Um, Bow Drive is close to Mid County and Executive Office Building. So two center is there. And when they were both centers, they both performed very well. That's fine. But I'm yeah. saying that we already have we moved Bow Drive to Mid County. So you want to move back Mid County to Bow Drive because they're oh, so would, close to each other. I would. I would. Ordinarily, I would do that. But um, I, I never supported moving out of Bow Drive. But. Um, let, let, me, let me let me ask a procedural question, Jim. Um, there were a number proposed all at once, and for the, the vast majority of those, I'd like to express agreement. Um, and then there's some where I have some concerns, and I didn't know if you want to well, one, try and figure out where the agreement is first, and yeah, let, then go there, or do you want to? No, that's a good idea. Um, because, well, let's yeah. let's do let's do the early voting sites first. Okay. The Eleven. Well, Mr. President, perhaps. And then we can do the alternates. As perhaps you, we could suggest that uh, Nahid amend her motion to deal with just the early voting regular voting. sites first. Yeah, I amend my because motion to accept the eleven early voting sites which I just read. Okay, so Nahid's amending her motion to put before us the eleven early voting sites. We're not going to discuss alternate. Okay, right. This so round. now I. Do we need a second for that? Uh, I'll second that motion. Okay. Amend it. So now we're just talking about the eleven early voting sites. Okay. So my procedural question kind of remains, but if it's okay with you, I will talk about both. I, I'm, I'm going to have an amendment to propose, but I also to one of them, but I want to support ten of them. So, so you want to support um, 10 of the 11? Right. I want to support 10 of the 11. So and let's vote and then, on then the I, and then I'm going to have a motion on the on the 11th one. But l let me let me let me talk in particular about the about the new ones. Um, because first of all, let me say that I think it's great that we have 11 sites, and I think that that's um, a, that's that's a big plus for us. And I also think that it's great that we're talking about keeping the vast majority of them in the same places which I think we all know that that, that helps the voters to figure out um, where things are. Um, Sandy Spring is a new site for, um, for all of us. Um, it is, um, in my view, it is a, a substantially better location and a better facility than the, than the Longwood site. Um, we had the rare occurrence at our public hearing that the Democratic and Republican parties of Montgomery County both came in and supported the same site. Um, okay, fine. That's why Sandy Spring uh, we're talking about the 11 early voting sites. Forget about the Longwood. I, I'm, I'm agreeing with you now. He just no, 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 no. We are talking <laughs> about talk about the 11 <laughs> early sites. 11 of them. Forget about the alternate. We are not talking about. I'm the not alternate. talking about the alternate. Okay, then go ahead. I'm, 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 I'm talking about. Um, and I apologize. I, I, I prepared my thoughts about this before I even knew what you were proposing for the alternate. Okay. I was complimenting the fact that we're going with the Sandy Spring site. I have a number of people I know who live in Olney. They tell me that that's a, that is a place that they know well, that they go past, etc. They say the opposite about the other site that will not be named. Um, <laughs> as, as, as far as the, um, the Wheaton site goes, I want to say a thank you um, to our former colleague Gracie and to Marianne and to Chris and to Margaret and to Kevin and to whoever else um, was part of um, Procuring this site because I know that there were uh, a lot of people who who did um, a lot of work on. Name it. the site you're talking I'm about. I'm sorry, the St. Catherine, yeah. the Claridge Room at the St. Catherine uh -huh. uh, Catholic okay. Church, the Catherine Labore uh, Church. You know, and when just to, on, on David mentioned that, is that how we're going to post it and and describe it as the Claridge Room at the church? I, I, I would highly recommend that for reasons I'm about to explain. But um, I agree with David. Um, but um, because it's not in the church, right? Exactly. I'm, I'm, I'm about to get to that. First of all, it's in a good location on Virismo Road. It has lots of parking. I actually um, did a little study of my own and went there on a Sunday afternoon. I actually went there on a Sunday morning and a Sunday afternoon. 
Um, the busiest time of the day was the Spanish language mass that was at a, roughly one o'clock in the afternoon, and it was very crowded, but still there were actually parking spaces available. We might want to steer people away from that particular time frame, but even if they come at that time frame, um, there is park, you know, there was parking available. Now that is what um, one of our witnesses at our test, at our public testimony indicated. I just wanted to indicate that I actually saw it with my own eyes. I have pictures to show people if anyone wants to see them, but um, but it was um, a, a very a very impressive um, um, thing that even at their busiest time, um, the room is very large, um, and, and and I plan to support it. Now along the way, I've asked a number of questions about it because I think it's um, important to be sensitive to all parts of our community, including um, non-Catholics who. Um, might be um, wondering whether it's okay for them to uh, to vote um, in a um, school owned by a Catholic church. Um, and I actually um, had a conversation um, with Karen Barrow, who is a former lobbyist for the Orthodox Union and the Jewish Community Relations Council. So she's someone who's very um, active um, or has been very active in the Orthodox Jewish community. And I just kind of said, what do you think about this? Um, and she actually checked with um, a rabbi who is, I, I, I won't name him at the moment, but basically who is very high up in the Orthodox um, community of Greater Washington. And there were two things that um, are actually very important um, that allow Orthodox Jews as a matter of, uh, of religious observance to be able to vote in that facility, both of which we have in that facility. Um, one of them is that it's not in the same building with the um, sanctuary. Um, um, and the other is is that the room does not have religious icons that are visible. Either of those things would make that a site where they could not go. Now admittedly, if they don't go there, they can go to other sites. But I think that the fact that we're able to present a site that, um, um, that they can vote in if they would like to um, I think is a, uh, is a major plus for us and I wanted to make sure that I got that on the record. Then the other thing uh, that I asked a lot of questions about, um, you all know, of course, that we have um, a Maryland statute that says that we are to give priority to public buildings over private buildings. Um, and we also have um, a statute, well, it's part of the statute on the election day polling places and there's a separate statute that <laughs> says that what applies to the election day polling places applies to early voting. As Kevin and I have been discussing, there are some things that apply to election day voting that don't make a whole lot of sense for early voting, such as the preference for polling places that are within the precinct, because really the whole county is the precinct. But as far as the preference for um, for public buildings over private buildings, we are so basically um, the statute says that that we are that we can use private buildings when we cannot find a suitable public building um, for the purpose. So with that in mind, I um, have been speaking with the, uh, I spoke with people in, um, in the recreation department to get a sense of the activities that would need to be canceled for, um, for us to, um, to have early voting there. Um, obviously, when we have early voting in any community center, we have the possibility of canceling programs. But in this particular center, which is a senior center, um, we have essentially what I would consider to be a health issue, um, which is that there are a lot of programs there that are designed for physical activity for the elderly, which is a very important thing for them. Um, yoga, dance of various types, including dancing for individual disability, Tai Chi, Pilates, karate, aerobics, karate for individuals with disabilities. Um, and then the conference room, which is next to the room that we would have used in, in Holiday Park, also has a variety of discussion groups, including discussions of health issues, how to use a smartphone, diabetes support group, English or speakers of other languages, widowed persons support group, um, Spanish uh, writing club, etc. So I think that there is um, a very large number of programs that would be um, problematic for us to um, to cancel in terms of uh, more than problematic. I think it really would be uh, um, unsuitable um, as a site for us to, as a cost of having to 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 locate there, um, would would it would mean that 
um, that those would not be able to, to take place. And then the, the last thing I would say... Mr. Naiman, yeah. real quickly, yeah. you are referring to the Holiday Park Senior Center. I'm sorry. The sites that I'm referring to are all, yes, all of that refers to the Holiday Park Senior Center, as which is geographically very close, walking distance to the, church, to the, to the Claridge Room that we're talking about. But um, but for a variety of reasons, I think would would not be a, a, a suitable alternative. I want to add one more to the list, and that is that um, the size of the room that we would use um, is actually smaller than our smallest um, early um, early voting site. It would it would it would become the smallest room that 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 that, that, that we would use, and and. Um, we already have experience with being crowded in a number of different places, but um, but that's that that's one of the issues. So um, so from my perspective, um, I'm very pleased that we're keeping the vast majority of of the sites. Um, I'm pleased that we were able to find um, an alternative in Wheaton, given the unavailability of where we had early voting two years ago. Um, that um, that that works. I congratulate all the people who were part of that. Um, it, uh, um, sometimes it takes a village to get a polling place, um, and um, and I think that the um, the Sandy Springs site is also um, a, a a good choice. Um, whenever you're um, you're you're ready to move to it, I, I do have concerns about one of the early voting sites and um, and a motion to make. And that's Potomac, as we discussed. Yes, correctly. that is Potomac. Um, essentially, my, uh, I, I mean, I can make my motion well, let me, now. Let me we have a motion yeah. on the table. Yes. Mr. Well, no, but an amendment is always in order to amend a motion okay. on the table. Well, it sounds like David agrees to, and I'll ask Marianne, it sounds like David, without discussion, agrees to 10 of the 11. Correct. Okay. Marianne, how do you? I think Alex had a question. Oh, I'm sorry, Alex. Mr. President, I just would like to lend my support to Nahid's motion, and I think that you know we've really accomplished something here because of the 11 sites that she has proposed we've kept eight of the nine that we had in the last election cycle the only reason we didn't keep the ninth was because we couldn't keep it that was the one in Wheaton we didn't really have a choice about that um, I think St. Catherine Labore the, the, the former school is an ideal location it has probably uh, if not the most one of the most parking spaces of any of the sites that we have it's about as centrally located in Wheaton as you could get, um, and it's vacant, so no one's going to be disturbed by using it. Um, and I don't think there's really any legitimate concern about whether um, people are going to, uh, of any faith are going to feel uh, somehow imposed upon by going to that uh, location. And so it makes a lot of sense for a number of reasons, and I think in this case, uh, the justification for using the project facility has been amply met. Um, so, uh, uh, then the only uh, major area of the county that we have never covered before is the only area, and that's w what was the purpose of selecting and uh, proposing Sandy Spring. And, um, you know, I think I've looked at this, I think all of us have looked at this over the last uh, number of weeks, and you know, I feel it's uh, very suitably located for the people of Olney, and now, you know, that community will have a center that's close to where they are. Um, and, uh, you know, as far as Potomac is concerned, I think there are maybe some concerns about the construction that's going to be going on there, but I think it's something we should try to work with. Um, and I don't think I've heard from anybody that it's going to be impossible to make that site work. And we, you know, spent a lot of capital and a lot of debate getting that site in the 2016 cycle. And I think it would make sense um, to try to adhere to the principle of keeping a site from a prior cycle unless there's some overriding reason to change it. Um, so with that, I. Uh, I do have some comments about the alternates, but with, with that, I would uh, urge strong support of Nadine's motion. Marianne. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Well, I would, I'd like to oh, echo I think what Alex just sure. said. And uh, say, and I don't know, I'll speak for the Protestants who seem not to be spoken for here, and, uh, <laughs> and say that I don't know any Protestant who wouldn't go to a synagogue or a Catholic church or any place else if it allowed them to vote. And I think Nadine's done a good job with this. Thank you. Uh, well, as you, as you know, I uh, have always been in favor of uh, keeping uh, as many of the existing sites as possible, if not if not all of them. In fact, uh, with my uh, uh, cry of "If if it ain't broke, don't fix it," 
and because it just it just makes good sense in terms of uh, the citizenry to be able to count on the same place uh, each election. Uh, so I think I think we've done a fine job with that. Uh, I think we all pretty much were in agreement when we got the 11th site that we would like to uh, put put something in the only area. Uh, as I stated earlier, when we were discussing Olney two years ago, uh, the only site that uh, came to the fore at that time, I believe, was the Longwood, and it just, you know, didn't meet the uh, criteria that we needed. Sandy Spring, I think, is is terrific for a variety of reasons, especially because it's right more center to uh, to the Olney community and will serve people well. Um, uh, of course, I was uh, intimately involved with uh, St. Catherine Labore and um, uh, was, was very, uh, very pleased that uh, we have been able to, to work things out there. Uh, David made reference to uh, Gracie, our, our former colleague, um, when, when we were having uh, some communications difficulty, uh, Gracie and I talked and uh, she suggested that I call my friend Monsignor Ensler <laughs> to help us on the issue, which I did, and, uh, and I think it did help. Uh, so I, I think it's going to be a great site. All of us, uh, I think, have been in agreement of how important it is for the Wheaton community to have a site, to keep a site there. It's been a real frustration that we've had to keep moving it around due to construction issues there. Um, and hopefully in 2020 it will all end when we'll have a permanent site. But meanwhile, um, I think St. Catharines is really going to serve the community well for um, the issues already stated. Um, in terms of uh, the Potomac site, I'd like to reserve uh, my uh, comments on that until we, uh, I think we're going to hear a little more information about the construction and uh, what that's going to entail. But I'm certainly prepared uh, to, to vote for the other 10 uh, going forward. Okay. Because I know David, uh, David and I had a discussion. He's got very, you know, very, uh, you know, legitimate concerns about the parking and the construction, so we, and that's, that certainly deserves our discussion. But it, it seems like from what I've heard that we're basically in agreement on the 10 sites, and then we'll discuss Potomac separately. Does that? Works for me. Does sure. that, how does everybody feel about that? What's the deadline that we have to have that up to the last today. site? Today? <laughs> <laughs> and what's the next deadline beyond today? The absolute <laughs> drop dead deadline. Twelve o'clock tonight. <laughs> um, this needs to be to the state board on November 26th. Thank you. And the state board has to approve it by December 26th. Thank you. Thank you, baby. Alex Nahida, it sounds like. Okay. It sounds like the board wants to vote on the 10. All right then. You want to? I move it. I move we approve the following. The Muskers, Germantown, Activity Center at Borough Park, Executive Office Building, Jane Lawton, Chevy Chase, Silver Spring Civic Center, Maryland President, Burtonville, Mid County, St. Catherine, Labore, and Sandy Spring. Let me ask you, how does the board feel? Like, you know, I because David raised some concerns. Do we do we want to call it? And no, I agree with David on, on this. Because some may may feel uncomfortable. Do we want to call it in our public disclosure, the Claridge Room at St. Catharines? Or yeah. how well, do well what you could say, uh, Mr. President, is the the former St. Catherine Library School. I think that's the building that it was in. It's School. actually not. It's um, it 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 is in fact called. The Claridge building, and it, it very prominently says Claridge outside of it. The school is attached to it, but it is a huge, um, I, I guess you might call it all-purpose room, but I think it's used for weddings. For It's a very large room with lovely chandeliers, and there's nothing school-like or church-like about it at all. The, the other thing is is that on the outside of the building, it is labeled as the Claridge room. Yeah, so, that's right. So I said. So Could you say Claridge room and then put in parentheses all-purpose room, which anybody would understand 
that that wasn't part of the church. I mean, the, the problem, Mr. President, I, I think yeah. we're getting a little too technical about this, is that people know that site as St. Catherine's. It, yeah. it, you know, if we start trying to call it something too different, yeah. right? And, and, and well, it might and, confuse people. And, and, yeah. and I, I wouldn't suggest leaving out the name of the church. No, I would, no, I agree. I, 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 think would, think I would suggest indicating that it's the Claridge Room at St. Catherine's Labore. I think the way it is stated here, St. Catherine Labore Catholic Church, Perens Claridge Building. We use a variety of of churches. Catholic or whatever, and I have never seen anything specified in in the others uh, as to what the room is within the complex. I so the, I think this certainly suffices. How does the board feel about the way it's listed in in our agenda today? Did you see that, Alex? And the, in other words, if you turn over our agenda, it's listed as St. Catherine's. Catholic Church and Perens Claridge Building, or put Dash Claridge Building, whatever. I mean, you know, certainly you can. Because when, when you when you go in there, it says Claridge on the building. Yes. I, I, I think the in order to convey that it's not in the church, and this is not just about people being um, hypersensitive. This is about people whose religious beliefs would not allow them to go in. Um, to the church, so they don't vote in our all our other places. Is they, that correct? That that is my understanding. That if that if 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 it, if it is in the same building, we've never had this issue come up. So you're telling me that I guess there's no uh, Orthodox uh, no, member no, that uh, lives no, in a place no, where that's no, a. I'm, uh, not, I'm not saying that at all. Our state law actually has a provision that allows people who have a religious objection to entering a particular polling place to request an alternative polling place. I don't know how often it's happened, um, but it is, I mean, it is a matter of state law. So obviously there are some people who have religious issues. I am not one of them. Um, but there are some people who have religious issues with, with entering certain types of buildings. The fact that it is a separate building from the, from the church itself is relevant to when, you know, we have a significant Orthodox Jewish community that has voted at the Wheaton Early Voting Center in the past. Um, for that for that group of people, this is a significant fact. David, are you are you arguing against using Claridge Building? No. What I mean, no. I, what's I, the I, I am, what is I am, the discussion I am, here? I'm not sure what it's about. Right the now. name. I am first of all, I am in favor of both using Claridge, either Claridge Building or Claridge Room, and saying St. Catherine Labore. Exactly. I mean, I, exactly. I, I because I think that what Alex says is correct. You want people to know what you're talking about, where it is. But, you, but what, I, what I would hope that we could convey, and I don't know that we need to decide this at this moment, we probably need to decide it before we send our sample ballot out, um, but what I would hope we could convey is the fact that it's, you know, that it's in a separate building. Um, and, and, and just stating the name of the building is not good enough? listed here? Claridge Building. Is that okay. I am not the expert on whether that's enough. I would want to consult with someone who is. Who? Um, I would like what type of person? Well, well it's the problem is there. I don't know that there's necessarily consensus in the Orthodox community about what the standards are. I, I can tell you that. So, well, that may that 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 may be true too. Um, um, we, well, doesn't Marianne doesn't that point out that everything? What's the matter with Claridge Building at St. Catherine Labore? Um, I I have no problem with that. Well, what, because what it's at St. Catherine Labore. Right. It is their facility. It is, it's a part of their facility. So, uh, so what's wrong with what Kevin just said? Because just, I he, think he, he just said it is at St. Catherine Labore. I, but uh, it it's at St. Catherine Labore in the Claridge Building, if oh, you but will. But he says St. Catherine Labore slash Claridge Building. Fine with that. I think the way it's listed on the agenda is acceptable to me. I, I, I cannot believe it. As long as both names are there, yes. But I think I think the facility is St. Catherine Labore. Can, can, can I make a suggestion? Can, can all we need to do today is we need to decide what it is that we're recommending to the state board. I don't believe we need to decide how it is that it, it will be described to the public. Thank you, Dave. Yeah, all um, right, then. So, so, give, well, when you, you know, go on our website? Well, you raised it, so. Yes. 
<laughs> He's, but it's going to go on and a and website. And in a minute. And in a minute. Yeah. Yeah. And, and as an attachment. Right, right. Yeah. right. But I'm, I'm, I'm not, uh, to me, what's most important is what we communicate to the voters so that the voters know what their options are. But, but the way we call it is going up tomorrow. Correct. Right. So that's, well, to, to, to me, if you want to imply that the building itself is owned by the church, but is not itself a church, as I understand. It's on the campus of. Yes. But the, but exactly. But the property is the church. The property is owned by the Archdiocese of Washington. Right. Okay. So, um, so but we're, it's, we're it, it is a sanctified building that you're talking about. They won't go in. This isn't. This is on the campus of the building. And it says Clarence Building in parentheses. Mm -hmm. And I'm not down there as often as I used to be, but I'm thinking from the public perspective, if I'm looking for this facility as an early voting location, yes, there's going to be signage out, but if you're driving down Bears Mill, is there anything on Veers Mill that says Claridge Room? No. Or does it say St. Catherine? People are going to be so, looking for the church. So right. Good point. Yes. I mean, I think the way it's described so on the agenda. So when you pull into it, then it says, but you see Claridge Well, Yeah. When what, you pull what, into the parking what, what, and what, go up what, the what, driveway, yes. Let, let me suggest. I'm okay with how it's listed on the agenda. I would like us in our website to clarify that it's in a you know that it's that it's in a separate building it's you know et, et, et cetera and I think we'll have to do some outreach to to let people know that but I can I can help with that um, but, but as it goes out from today we can I, I, don't, I don't I don't I don't have a problem okay where do we start we Lisa. have a we have a motion to approve the 10 sites that you indicated yeah. but we don't have a second oh. is there a second? second I will second that motion any further Call discussion on the 10 I think we've discussed it on the 10. All those in favor of approving the 10 sites that uh, are in the motion? Yeah. Say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay, so we have approval of 10 early voting sites. The last one that uh, Nahida proposed was Potomac, and I know David has uh, wants a discussion on that. Or do you want Which is an important you want to move it So we have to move move for an 11th site. Yeah, so I move we accept Potomac Community Center as our, uh, one of the sites, 11th uh, site. And I second. Okay. Is there any discussion? Okay. I would like to move to amend the motion to um, change it to the North Potomac, the, the Nancy Dasig North Potomac Community Rec Center. Okay. Is there a mm -hmm. Why? Oh, do we need a second? Wait, no, it's wait, not on the floor yet. Oh, okay. uh, I'll second it for purposes of discussion. Okay. So we're now going to discuss. We we'll discuss them both at the same time, right? Sure. Yeah. Makes it yes. So we're going to okay. discuss both motions: Potomac and North. Dakota. Right. Well, basically, yeah. Right. Right. So, well, so the motions on Potomac and well, the, the right. amendment is on, you the the amend yeah. on is on North Potomac. All in one. Okay. So. Um, I've spent um, a, a fair amount of time um, looking at um, both of these sites. Um, and if any of you have not been to the Nancy Dasick Community Center, which is quite new, um, it's a beautiful facility with lots of parking, lots of space. The meeting room there is larger than most gyms. I mean, it, it, it's, it, I mean it's really, um, it, it's, a great, uh, it's a great facility. Um, my concern about Potomac um, is the same as any as my concern about any location that has inadequate parking. Um, I think that um, when you look at the construction picture, do we have the construction picture? We're, we're prepared to present the construction presentation that we provided last month. Okay. Um, well, I'll, I'll just tell you kind of what, what I got out of it, and if people want to see it over again, I don't want to waste everyone's time if you don't if you don't need to. Um, the construction has two different effects on parking. One effect is, is that they are taking over the entire gravel parking area at the Potomac Community Center with construction vehicles and basically construction setup. Um, and that is a very sizable area of parking. It's probably 30 parking spaces in that, um, in, in that space that would be lost as a, um, as a result of, um, uh, thank you. Um, this, this does not include the construction. 
the presentation will. Yeah, yeah. So, so, yeah. So that, so in this, in this picture, the area that is in the the lower left um, of, of of this uh, of this picture, what what you're seeing there, there are some cars that are kind of that are that are parked there, but there is. It's, it's actually larger than you can see here because the trees are blocking part of the uh, part of the parking area. But there's a huge amount of parking there that that would be lost. Um, then you add to that. So starting where, David? It's uh, starting. Does it start with the cars? It, 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 it starts a little bit ahead of the cars. You can see the last white line there. Yeah. That's the end of the paved parking, and it gets to the gravel parking. Okay. Everything below that white line is the gravel parking. So you'd be losing a large amount of, of parking there, and then what the what the presentation was was that depending on which part of the construction they are at when when it gets to be the um, it gets to be early voting time, um, there's an additional 10 to 12 spaces that um, are going to be lost. So we're talking about, um, and this is in a facility now. I'm not sure if you can if you can see it here, but um, when you look at, at, at this facility, the parking only goes um, approximately on this map where it says the address, 11315 Falls Road. That is the end of the parking lot. The pavement that you see beyond that, I believe, is, um, is a, um, um, a, a, either a basketball court or something, but it's not, it's not parking. You cannot get there with your car. Um, and um, on the left side of the building on this picture, um, there are just a couple of spaces. There's actually a circle there, but there, but 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 there's not parking there. There's really a, a, a very limited parking that would you know that that that's available on that side of the building. Um, the estimate was that there were a hundred parking spaces, um, which I believe includes the 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 gravel area, um, and. You know, we'd be losing the gravel area plus another dozen. Um, you're looking at a 30 to 40 percent loss of parking. To me, that is a disservice both to the citizens of Potomac um, and to um, other citizens who could benefit from our having an early voting site where we don't have parking issues. Um, I think you all can remember that um, the Potomac site was very well utilized two years ago and in fact parking was a major complaint at the Potomac site um, um, on you know on more than one occasion um, there is um, a street across the street where there is you know a, a few spaces um, there may be parking in the surrounding neighborhoods that are much further away that you can't see on this um, on this map I'm sorry Crossing that street won't work. Right. Well, yeah, yeah. Road. Right. Well, right. Right. Cross yes, with police. Assistance. Right. Right. Well, police assistance. Right. Right. But but but, cro right. but crossing Falls Road is, is a ser is a, is a serious problem. So can people park on Falls Road? No. Parking is parking people? is not allowed on Falls Road. And um, I believe there's one bus that goes to the, 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 that goes to this facility, but it. it, it it, 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 stop right, out. right. It may it, it, it may it, it may kind of barely have bus service, but I don't think it's likely. Remember, the Potomac has among the highest uh, number of cars per person of any part of Montgomery County. <laughs> so, so um, my thought was was to was to go to the next closest site um, where where parking. Um, was available. Um, that was the, the the North Potomac site. Um, I guess I need to find that um, Here's the, uh, uh, my 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 map. That's but but um, um, I think it actually will be um, a better deal for people who live in Potomac to be able to go somewhere and be able to find parking. I think that we're going to get a lot of frustration from people if they go to vote um, and and parking is not available. Anybody else have any discussion? Uh, Mr. President, I think, I think Mr. Naaman raises some, some valid concerns. I think it's a close question, but I, I would oppose the, amendment, the uh, motion as amended uh, because I think that we, we need to be a little creative here, but I think we can work with Potomac. Uh, maybe there are some strategies we could get some increased parking spaces, maybe on some of the grass areas. I don't know, but even with the, 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 the restriction, I, mean, I think the staff has determined that it's still compliant, and I think there's a lot to uh, lend itself to keeping that site where it is, 
because it was there in 2016. Um, and again, I, I'm kind of loath to move things around if we don't absolutely have to. Um, so I, I think that, uh, I don't know that we fully explored all the options for what we could do to mitigate the loss of those spaces. Um, and I think we should try to do that. Um, although using North Potomac as an alternate, I mean, I, I guess if we had to predict in advance the, the site most likely to maybe have problems that would require us, which might be Potomac, uh, but we never, we don't really know. Um, but I, I think on balance, the, uh, the factors uh, supporting retaining it there uh, are, are still are still paramount in my mind. Margaret, are we going to hear from Chris or are you? If the only thing that we're going to be able to do for you today is to represent the construction uh, that we should do last month. I mean, I'd like to hear from Chris or you or what staff thinks of the viability of. Well, I'd, I'd like to get a more exact account of the numbers. I certainly I can't see looking at this map unless there's something more definitive in, in uh, the presentation. It doesn't look to me like there's a hundred parking uh, spaces here when we take out, you know, this area down there and I'm looking at, you know, what's around here um, and then, you know, the saying that you're going to move, move 10 or 12 of those. Construction uh, will reduce the number of uh, parking spaces, um, and you're talking about 60, uh, 60 to 70 parking spaces will be available. Um, and if you factor in the uh, number of judges, which would be about 10, 14 judges at that site, and then of course the uh, the community center recreation people, uh, you're probably down to 40 to 50 spaces. At, at, at least. I, I mean, this is, um, well, let me say, speaking uh, speaking to the issue, first of all, you know, we should all be uh, proud and pleased that Potomac was such a success in the last election. <laughs> it was the first time it was used as an early voting site, <coughs> and it was our second uh, highest uh, in, in terms of its uh, the number of people there. Uh, that being said, that's uh, we're we're uh, suffering from our own success with this issue because it was very popular, and uh, there's no reason to think it wouldn't be popular again. It's also a very busy uh, recreation center. They have a lot of activities there, and uh, they, I think David is correct. I uh, I only went by there uh, one time on the the day that Nahid and I do our travels around uh, to to see it. But I do recollect that parking was tight there. It was a problem at times and people, you know, went away and came back or went away and were mad or whatever because it, it, it was a problem. So to say that we're going from the hundred plus spaces that were indicated on our original map here down to say 60 some and uh, you're going to have to take out from that the um, the the judges and the people coming for the rec center, uh, I really am concerned about those numbers. Jim, I'd like to go back to your question. What did the staff think of that this? Um, of the change, of changing? Did the board has always, you know, the staff really, we go out and find locations that we believe will work. The contractor from the, 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 work, con, the work contractor for this environmental water permeable uh, location said that he would work with the staff, uh, with the Potomac staff as well as the Board of Elections to uh, make as much parking available as possible. Um, of course, like any contracting work that is uh, conducted, uh, a in this particular case, a dry winter uh, a mild dry winter would definitely help us along in terms of being able to mitigate but there's still going to be contract the contractor is going to be there and one of the things now he is if you look at that map that I just distributed um, where the David described as where the white line is 
Uh, this is where the contractor is going to have his uh, heavy equipment staged during the, particularly during the June primary. Now, their, their goal is to be out of there in October. And they would try to move all of their heavy equipment off-site in time for the early voting uh, time. Period. Which is also in October. Yes. Yeah. Late October. But, yeah. That probably could be worked back a few seconds. Unless the weather doesn't live up to expectations. But we're not we're not going to have it for the primary, right? Oh, you're going to have you're going to have the smaller amount of uh, parking spaces for, for the, the primary. primary. So we could have it for, for both. We'll definitely have it for the primary. And what are the odds that they're not going to run over by a couple of weeks if they're if they're not even projecting to finish until mid-October? But the heavy equipment is what the key is, getting that heavy equipment out. Well, that comes that out at the very end, I think. Well, I know. I, well, let's not argue about that. That's well, but the, in, in the past, voting in the primary is, in, a, in a gubernatorial election is less than the presidential. Very, very yeah. much less. Significant. Um, it could be <clears throat> as bad as it was in 2014, uh, which I believe was some, something close to 16 to 20 percent. And then uh, the highest it's ever been is in 2002, um, which I think it was at right under 40 percent. So that so that the volume is going to be much less than for the for then oh, the yeah. presidential election. Yes, it would be considerably less. It's in 2012, right? Two thousand no, two thousand and no, for a gubernatorial. Two thousand ten. Yeah. Where is this? Two thousand ten. Okay. Just to clarify, um, Chris, the hundred plus spaces, that is the marked spaces and the additional gravel lot, that's what was like another thirty or so, right? The hundred spaces are the marked space. Right. And there's really? additional in the gravel in the back around the corner. Sure we don't do some that. area that's not marked. The hundred marked space. Does does the hundred board three, would the board like to see the presentation of the topic? Sure. Okay. I mean, if it's more detailed than this, I, I could count these spaces, and I, this doesn't come close to a hundred. Mm -hmm. If I'm looking at little white squares. I love the, I like the tunnels because it's so heavily traveled. Yeah. That area is so convenient, so so heavily traveled, uh, much more so than yeah. Right. Yeah. And we had to get a law passed to get it. It's very popular. Is it oh, it is popular. Is it a private? Do we know? Is it a private contractor or a county contractor? It's a private. It's a private contractor. Thank you. It's a big project. Uh, are there spaces there that aren't marked? No, there's, 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 there's twenty here. There's spaces here under these trees, but only one, but only one row. One row, so that's thirty. Not, 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 not two. Because if these spaces over here, if I spend five more over here, if 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 that, then I just go there. So take the next step. When you go in on Google from overhead, you can zoom in. Alex, what Allison said is she thinks there's a hundred place spots in addition to the, the, the gravel area. Was another I'm up to 60. Is that correct, Alice? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, 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 think there's, I think there's easily 60. Uh, remember, they're going to take 10 away. Right. Do you really have a problem with that? Yeah, yeah, okay. And you count down to that line. Yeah. See, all the New Yorkers, they'll be on the grass anyway. All the New Yorkers will be parked on the grass. 
So it's They'll be on the grass and the bushes. That's well, that's, but you, can you know what I mean, Alex? I got to vote. I'm on the bush and on the grass. This contractor will bet it at another 20. Right across here All right, so you got 60. Mm-hmm. What, what I'm hearing now is it's 130 spots, not 100. It's 100 mark plus 30 around the grass. And Kevin will be parked on the grass next to there. This contract could an access road right to the street. Yeah, you park on the next street. Why don't you advertise that, and then people can just come over to your house. Yeah. And last time, it does. It comes to you. It was like, yeah, you got it. You got a little thought. Thank you for that. Google is amazing. Yeah, yeah. I think you can train contractors. Well, what do you what do you think? Do we need to see this? Get your son to make some. I okay, think that we need to see how much of this is, is All right. coming out. This is the Potomac Community Center. Chris? What? This, yeah. this is what we viewed in the past as it's been presented to you. And uh, we'll run through that, this particular section of, of the presentation that was given uh, at the public hearing. And then we can go further. I have the piece that shows the uh, project, the construction project. So this is the building showing most of the park in areas. Chris, yes. go back. Chris, when you and Mary Beth went out and re inspected this location, yes. did you count all of the parking spaces that were available at the rec center? Yes. Okay. And we and came up with 100. A hundred, including the gravel parking, or not? No, I didn't include. When you see in when we look at the parking slide, and it says a hundred plus, that basically is saying there's overflow. We're counting a hundred marked spaces, but we know in this particular location that there is overflow down in the gravel and back up behind. Sometimes they'll allow us on the uh, asphalt for the uh, courts, mm -hmm. but there are a hundred mark spaces. In addition to the gravel parking? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. We just okay. we just counted them. We we concur with that. Oh, okay. We yeah. on the Google yeah. map. Yeah. We, right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Allison just showed us on Google Maps. Why and did that? But Chris, Chris, they do allow them to park on all of the asphalt. Mm -hmm. We can get permission to use the courts sometimes if we have it, the availability of the courts. Uh, cars can go. Did we do? There's a way for cars to go onto the as. Uh, the in asphalt. the upper area, there is some. And what is the green on the? the Facing the screen on the right hand side, that big swath of green there. That's where Kevin That's, falls. <laughs> that is fenced and it is uh, some kind of a ball field, not baseball, but there's some sport played there. But that could be used. Well, no. It's Ooh. fenced. No, it's behind no, no. chain. Yeah. It's chain link. And oh, that, that could be taken down. And that fence. area <laughs> is scheduled to be part of the construction. <laughs> Not only will they be constructing on the asphalt, this is yeah. to uh, mitigate water running in the wrong directions. They're trying to uh, have the drainage improved there. So it's not only the asphalt that they're going to be working on. That area that you're talking about right mm -hmm. there is part of the construction. That will, when this the area... Start? Construction will start just about any time, hopefully, if they're staying on schedule. Chris, do you want to go to the construction slide? Yes. Presentation. Uh, Janet, would you mind changing up so we have that second file, please? <coughs> the asphalt is. That's <coughs> this second piece that uh, just is a file on the construction itself shows the areas that they intend to improve. I believe it was at the last meeting. We 
discuss the potential um, to lose parking. This is on their website, and the green overlay <coughs> shows the area that they are improving for this watershed project. This is one of our aerials that we use. It shows the entrance and the address. Now, we ourselves did this hopefully being able to explain the staging that will be going on. This area here that is striped is the gravel area that has been available to patrons of the center to use for parking. That is where the contractor intends to stage their work, their equipment, and any kind of materials that they need. While they're working, they will be staging their projects. So they, when we spoke with them, they said that they would only be working in segments on the asphalt of 12 spaces at a time. So where we have this green mark, there's many more spaces there than 12. So only a portion of that would be potentially worked on while we're there. They will eventually work on the driveways, but that probably, my impression, will come towards the end. But they will be segmenting these different areas and only doing small sections at a time. Do we know how people will get in when, Can you go when, back when, they're, when they're working on the, the driveways? Yeah. I mean, Mr. Naiman, we did not go to that much detail, but I would think what would happen was one access, access point would be done at a time. Say they would possibly do this point and leave this area. That portion is a daycare, and so th right up that building, here. I mean, that portion of the building is always going to have to have access because parents drive in and drive out. So uh, if that portion, when they do that portion, then the other portion will be open, and when the, the main entrance or the uh, general main entrance is worked on, then well, everyone will be going in on the daycare entrance. It, it just concerned me because Chris just suggested that that might be near the end and near the end is close to general election early voting. If we didn't have the, the one of the entrances or exits for general election early voting that could be quite disruptive, maybe even more so than the parking issue. I think we'd have to work very carefully and clearly with the contractor. <coughs> The contractor and the county have expressed uh, publicly and at our meeting that they are very willing to work with us to ensure that um, all of the activities in the Potomac Community Center uh, will not be t totally paralyzed by um, their construction. The object is to keep the Potomac Community Center open, available for business, um, and that's what the contractor is supposed to do. But their normal business is greatly exacerbated by early election. Shall we go forward? The uh, courts, this area here, will be improved. Just, um, I'm not a contractor, but all of this all of these photos are areas that they intend to improve. But might oh, so they are going to be doing something back on those courts, but huh? Might be the whole available. Ten for acres, depending the whole upon the time. Ten time. acres that go back to the first slide. That whole area is going to be. Uh, it's not resurfaced because it's going. It's an environmental watershed project and it, the surface or the ground is going to be changed so that it's water permeable. And then also there's a drainage issue. The way that the drainages will 
uh, so that it drains away from the building. A so project it's not like this, just a, hmm? a project like that, they do phase by phase. And they that's don't what do they it all together. Us. They do phase one and then finish phase one. They go phase two, phase three. Therefore, it's not going to be affected. The whole area is not going to be affected. The phase one will be one time and then phase two, phase three. That's the construction. So it's not like that. Yeah, we need to go forward. So this is the photo, a court. This is some of the parking. Now, uh, Ms. Phelps, you ask about this area here. You can see that this is a court and it's fenced in. We would not be able to park there. Right Except here, you had asked about that area. That will be improved, but it's not so that we can pull cars in there. More parking will be redone. Entrances will be redone. This is back towards the fenced area that we were just looking at at the end of the parking area. This is also scheduled for construction. This area is a walkway back behind the community center. It will be redone. And that's all that we have available at this time. Thank you, Chris. So there's 100 spaces plus 30. Uh -huh. Right? Am I? Yeah. No, the 30, the 30, the 30, 30 will not comes be off. There, that's not 30 right. won't be there, so that's the about gravel. 100. About 100. About 100, yeah. Do we have any further discussion? I will be accepted. Uh, let me, uh, if I may, uh, Mr. President, ask another question. Sure. If, if we saw uh, and this would mean, you know, if, if we had the uh, North Potomac, say, as one of our uh, alternate sites, uh, and if we, getting close upon election time, uh, saw that this was a huge exactly. mess that, you know, was not going to work given their other activity and what we figure is going to be coming. Uh, what kind of timing would we need to uh, pull the plug and um, which... That's a very good question. You know, to say, okay, we're, we're going to have it at, at North Potomac. We made a mistake. Um, you would probably, we would need to, middle of April, uh, need to, I'm sorry, middle of May, we would need to uh, make such a determination. We would continue to talk to the con contractor. We would continue to talk to the recreation department. We would continue to talk to the Potomac Community Center uh, personnel. Um, we would then go before the state board, say, and state that the Potomac Community Center, the construction has been delayed and it's creating uh, a non-usable situation and that uh, we are requesting that we uh, institute the alternate location of the North Potomac Center. Um, if we did it then, um, we could still change the sample ballot, right? Right now, our production schedule between when we get the final ballot uh, information and when we have to get it to the printer is the first half of May. Okay, good. May 15th is right now our target to send the artwork to the printer. Well, in that case, uh, so the only May, thing that May. we could do is the latter part of April. And, and, and lots of signage in front of this building saying it's been moved to such yeah. and such. Well, well, it wouldn't be moved. And that's for our, you know, for yeah. our current schedule to get the specimen ballot out the door when we want to. Yes, there's. Um, I, I would just say that from my perspective, I think it's actually more confusing to people to set it up and then pull the plug than it is to pick the site that has less parking and stick to it because you're going to have the time frame from now until April we're going to have in a prominent place on our website where all the early voting sites are. No, what, I appreciate we, that. What we picked and all of that. I'm um, just was thinking of a yeah. worst case scenario. And I, and I understand, and I know that I'm, I'm, I'm basically preaching your gospel that you've been saying for, <laughs> you know, for a very long time about um, 
of you know not moving and all that. Um, I mean, I, I, um, I mean, I appreciate the desire to stick with what with what we did, and um, and it was a very successful um, it was a very successful site. I'm just saying that um, I, I I think that it, that it would have to be a really bad disaster for us to to pull out of it after we've been promoting it for you know that, that period of time. Well, point of clarification. You plan to move back there for the general and live there forever. Is that correct? That it would just be early voting and primary that we would no, move we and then can't. move back there. No, 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 we're, no. no, we're required to be in the same we place. We have to do them both. They're, they're but I think everybody wants this site as the permanent site. Right. Definitely. It would be a 2018 only. I mean, my, my, my suggestion in terms of what I'm, I mean, I assume that all of our early voting decisions are only for this election, but, but my suggestion would be that it would, I'm only proposing North Potomac because of the construction. Otherwise, I would be proposing Potomac. I'm mean, yeah, supporting I, uh, supporting Potomac, but but it's just it's, it, it to me it's to me it's a similar issue to the Wheaton issue where, you know, um, we have a we essentially have a one election cycle problem, um, and um, you know, we're looking for a one election cycle solution. Any other discussion? Okay, so we have. Uh, Two motions basically on the table. I believe the amendment gets voted on yeah, first. Voted on mm -hmm. first so okay. We all need to vote on David's amendment. Well, so the amendment on the table is to move from Potomac to North Potomac. Right. Correct. Okay. Any discussion? We're done with the discussion. All those in favor of moving from Potomac to North Potomac say aye. Aye. All those opposed? Aye. Aye. Okay, so that's that's defeated four to one. And now we're going to vote on. Nahid's motion to make to keep the Potomac site as our 11th early voting site. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? I abstain. One abstention. So that's four. David, David, I appreciate the thought and the effort that you put into this, and I think I think there were lots and lots of valid thought, valid thoughts and reasons, and uh, I. I so it's an interesting discussion about Thank this. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Uh, let, let me also add, add that um, I know we don't need to do it now, but I have some suggestions for other things we can do to try and improve parking in nearby places to try and take overflow. And if I may, for the record, um, I, you know, I certainly understand and I had concern until I saw the close-up map with the parking spaces. Given the argument of um, projected turnout, um, and knowing that uh, this particular location means a great deal to my colleagues, um, you know, I really wanted to opt to to hope that this that this is going to work. I think it is. I think there are going to be enough spaces. Our philosophy is not to move people around if it's not necessary. So. We always talk about why we move people around in confusion and all of that. So since this place is workable, we keep it. I would like to also suggest just as to keep in mind the possibility of getting a, for lack of a better term, a crossing guard, of getting somebody in the parking lot to guide traffic and, and be, be the traffic guru uh, to be decided later. I think yep. we did do that, yeah, didn't we, in the last yeah. election? Yeah, yeah. No, I think we I, but I agree. That we, very much we need that. Yes. This place. And, and and one other thing to consider is whether <coughs> there's any option for having our judges park in some nearby location and shuttling them in. Bingo. Bingo. Um, yeah. Which I which I realize is is a logistical issue, but <laughs> at least it would it would it would free up a number of parking spaces. Okay, so we have our 11 early voting sites. Yes. And now we turn to the three alternate sites. And just before you all begin that discussion, uh, Allison's pointed out to me that in 2016, you all selected Bower, Long Branch, Upper County, and the uh, Board of Elections. Oh. We had four alternates last year. Bower, Bower, Long Branch, Upper County, and the Board of Elections. Okay. And just, I just want to add to this, too, that um, historically the State Board of Elections staff has allowed us to submit greater than the number 
So if you wanted to introduce five locations, it's what we need to coordinate with the recreation department uh, so that if you have, if we have a necessary, if we have the emergency, the fire, you know, we did have a fire at well, let me, let me. one time. Yeah. So, um, I mean, it's But we didn't have know. to move. Well, how many, we just approved 11 of how many? 11. 11 of 11. 11. No, no, but no, but we had uh, on, on our plate. Okay, now, the, according to this document I see here, you have Longwood, Dasic, and White Oak. And I'm just saying how many. No, no, on our plate go? initially were how many? 18 or 17? 26. Yeah. Yeah. Well, a lot of them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's a W about yeah. 20. XYZ. 23. 23. 23. 23. 23. Yeah. Oh, okay. 23. Well, I, I, I certainly think having three sites plus the Board of Elections is, is sufficient. I mean, because just adding these on for whatever purpose you have to go through a lot of work to you know make sure that they they're up to speed and and get the okay from you know the various places etc but wouldn't the use of an alternate depend on where we had a breakdown what part of the county yes yes that's why we try to put them you know upper lower middle, middle. yeah that makes sense the only ones we've had in the past, all that criteria was discussed. Right. And that they're the good. Yeah, they all meet the criteria. Do you have any suggestion other than what we've done in the past? I, my, my recommendation would be to um, utilize the DASIC Center, um, mm -hmm. the uh, White Oak location, and Upper County. That's the Long Branch. The White White Oak is the Long Branch. No, 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 no. White no, Oak is not the Long Branch. Uh, not between, Long Branch because uh, Long Branch has a significant parking yeah, problem. This is a, this is a parking issue, but, this, but there's a lot of people who live there during the summer, and there's no street parking. That's my concern about Long Branch. Okay. Um, White Oak. Uh, and Nancy Dasic. Dasic. Okay, I, I, I move the, as an alternate. Yeah. Can we go? Pardon me. For the mm -hmm. alternate. I move the ex Nancy Dasic, North Potomac, White Oak, and Upper County. Second. That's Upper four. County coming. Come Was that four? Three. Three. And, Three. and Board of what? Elections? And, and, board, and, of and board of Elections. I'm sorry, name them again. Upper County. Upper. White Oak. Uh-huh. And Nancy Dasic, North Potomac. And the Board of Elections. And the Board of Elections. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Alex, is that your second? It's present. I second that motion. Okay. Let's. Uh, any discussion on those? Well, Mr. President, I, I think it makes a lot of sense because the, the, the thing that we don't know is what site's going to have a disaster or breakdown, well, it's further and you want to have them mm -hmm. geographically Close, closer, uh, spaced right. out yeah. so they could serve multiple potential okay. locations that could go down. We just don't know where that's going to be. So I, I think this I is a good list. Uh, it, uh, we we did use Long Branch before, but you had a concern with it, Margaret. You said the Long Branch. Uh, my concern about Long Branch is that uh, the parking is a significant issue um, because we have uh, there's a pool there and uh, there's no street parking. So mm -hmm. especially mm -hmm. in the primary, mm -hmm. we Summer have pool. people Be open. swimming. Mm -hmm. uh, that means children. Mm -hmm. And that's children, but more importantly, there's no street parking. Whereas at Germantown, where we do have a swimming pool also, we have the middle school right next door, and we have street parking, and we have the church across the street. Long Branch is close to uh, uh, Silver Spring Civic Center. So. Well, remember, it, it would be used in an emergency. Right, what happens so if we example, don't have Silver Spring? If Silver Spring had been shut down. Shut down. White Oak is a little bit further down, so it can serve that uh, Wheaton, St. Catrick. Yeah, no, I, I, li I like the White Oak. I, I, I have no problem with uh, Upper County, White Oak, and Nancy Dason. Nor do I. Okay, then. I then. So Call the question. All those in favor mm -hmm. of? Accepting. Accepting uh, Nahid. Motion, Upper County, Nancy Dasick, North Potomac, White Oak, and the Board of Elections say aye. 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 No one opposed? Okay. So we have our all our sites. Thank you. And it only took an hour and a half. <laughs>
Okay, Margaret, your uh, okay, my report. report. Uh, personnel, there's no change. We're still waiting for the last shipment of batteries for the uh, electronic poll books. And when, when those arrive, we'll up, um, upgrade those. Staff members have been attending training re related to the DS200 campaign finance smart sheet training. Some of the staff uh, was, is training for emergency communication system. Um, that and in fact, Jessica White is covering for three people because they had to be here. <laughs> um, Budget-wise, uh, Margie. Okay. We sent in advance in the advance packet to you the latest spreadsheet through September 30th. So that's the first quarter of the fiscal year. Um, we um, have 84.57 percent of our funding still available. Um, and I will be happy to answer any questions. There's nothing alarming that stands out on this at this point. So if anybody has any specific questions, I'll be happy to answer them. Okay. Um, the next thing that I wanted to uh, bring back to everyone, um, we det staff determined after further analysis that our initial request to the board to allow us to begin accepting credit card payments um, for certain things really was not realistic because of the amount of, of sales that we do um, was really not sufficient. Even if we increased several of the fees, it was still not going to be sufficient to cover the exchange costs. And so, um, as I mentioned last month, we have withdrawn that request. However, we are requesting, and I sent out in the advance packet, um, that the board consider allowing a fee for absentee labels, um, which are prepared. And, and Janet, I may call on you to assist with this. Um, this is something that we have done um, free of charge uh, for many years. Um, these labels are provided twice a week to candidates or anyone else who requests them. There is uh, about two hours of staff time involved in preparing the information and uh, uploading it um, so that the candidates can access it. Uh, this is something that the State Board of Elections also provides. The State Board um, charges a one-time cost of $75 for a jurisdiction or $125 if someone wants it for the entire state. Um, in doing an analysis of the staff time to create the labels, um, estimated about <clears throat> $94.26 for each time uh, the labels are created uh, for an overall cost of about $1,500 for the entire um, period of time. Um, so what we are recommending, what we're requesting um, is that we uh, begin charging $50, um, a one-time fee of $50. Um, and we would continue our process of uploading them um, two weeks, two times a week um, through the duration of the absentee voting period um, for that one-time cost of $50. Um, so if you have any more questions, I'm going to have to <laughs> jettison it to Janet, I think. So, Marianne. Um, yeah. First of all, um, Am I correct that we have never charged correct. for this before? Okay. Well, can, I, I need to answer that. We originally, uh, when I first came on board, uh, and when we made the changeover from the mainframe over to the uh, state board's uh, photo registration database, um, at that time, the only thing that we ever provided were paper labels. And so in order to make it less cumbersome, because we were literally spending hours creating these labels. We went to this electronic means of providing the data uh, to whoever wanted to sign up for it at no cost. Now, So the people then print their own labels. Right. You used to provide the printed labels. Right. I know it well because I... <laughs> uh, Many times received so, them, but we. But then uh, it was just easier to 
uh, make it available electronically. And they didn't have to drive up to the court, or not to the courthouse, but to our office to get them daily. And they well, and, and, and it's, it's also easier at your end, too, of, of, of doing it this way rather yeah. than printing them and out. The you, you just form. have a... Uh, you take it off the computer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a list of... It's a list of people it's, it's who people that apply for an absentee ballots. ballot. So the candidates then uh, can can mail out out to them at that time, a last minute you know mailing type of thing. I know I have this wrong because it couldn't possibly be correct. The state provides this to them for seventy five dollars, and we're going to provide the same thing to them for fifty. That's our proposal. Okay, I do. so I don't have it wrong. That no. is. Uh, Why? What do other counties um, uh, charge? That I don't know the answer to, Janet. Do you know? I, I can answer that question. They send them to the state. They, send they don't do it at all. The local boards send them to the state board to order them. Uh, as so my question is, to reinforce what you said, they don't do this. Other counties don't do it at all. Thank so this is a gift oh, for fifty dollars. Uh, however, it's a change in a lifetime of precedence. Uh, you did your calculations based on six candidates requesting this? That was an, that I spoke to Janet and I, um, <laughs> what year was that based on? Because I asked about how many you did at one it point. It was the presidential. Gubernatorial is no longer higher. Yeah, gubernatorial would be much higher. Well, and it's it'll be hugely higher yeah. this, this time. I mean, you're going to have no. do dozens of them. Um, I, 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 I have a problem with this okay. at this time, uh, especially when it's something that, uh, y you know, you're creating it electronically and then it just, you know, it's a pushing a button to go out to uh, all these ver various candidates. It's not like the old days when, I mean, that would have been a case maybe to charge when you were printing them out and, you know, you had the cost of the labels themselves, et cetera, and it was being done for free. But this is something where the uh, the campaigns are actually having to then download it on their own labels. and. But there is significant whatever. work involved in to getting create. the data to create the file. Uh, Janet may want to speak to that. It, it's Mr. President, would you let Janet address this? Of course. This? Yeah. Sure. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a lot of work to create Janet, the file. Janet, will you please stand so we can okay. hear you? It's a lot of work to create the file. It does take me about two hours. Because I have to take in, extract it, format it, especially for those overseas, voter, overseas voters, because their addresses are not correct and MD voters. So I have to reformat all of their addresses. Then I also have to bounce it against what I've already sent you to make sure I'm not sending you duplicates. Mm -hmm. So it takes a long time. Like I do it on Tuesdays and Fridays normally. What's the period that it, it, it We normally start, as soon as they start sending out absentees and the week before the election we stop. So it would be, you think more than one? Uh, it's more than one. Just to clarify, Janet, so when they go to the state, the people who were sent to the state from other counties, mm -hmm. they're getting a CSV file straight from the state of the data. Right. But and when they come to the us, they're getting a pre-processed file that's set up and ready to print for labels. We've taken right. the data and processed it. And now format it. So it's a different format. So the candidate has to search it and made it easier. Pull off what they want yeah, and not have to use the entire file. Make labels. How much does it cost to register to run for the state senate? Fifty dollars. Fifty dollars, and how much? And so this would be. Is there any other fee when you're running? If you're going to run for the state senate, you come in and you pay um, fifty dollars. So this is the only other fee we charge any candidates for anything. No, the state charges. The state is the state. So this is the only fee we charge any candidate for anything. No, well, we we do the county council and sheriff and all that. I think that twenty five dollars. Right, Margaret. Yeah, but, but uh, that's the filing fee. That's the filing fee. Like you're asking, are there any other fees there, besides the filing you. fee at the present time? Thank you. Well, but you're in fact going to be charging more people. for this than filing fees in some cases. Mapping. Chris, Chris, is, Chris oh, yeah. is speaking up from the background. Um, there, um, if they request maps 
of, of their um, yeah. legislative districts or their councilmanic districts, then there would be a charge There's for them. There's a charge for that, for any of their maps they request. Yeah, I, I, and don't I we charge for the list, the I walking lists and all that? Good fee. I think $50 is not yeah, that much. Do, it's a CD the amount of work they month. do <laughs> with the shortage of okay. budget we have. Um, my own view, uh, I have no doubt that it requires staff time, although it requires it once no matter how many people come and ask for it because we're giving the yeah. same list to you know to whoever we're giving it to. There are certain things, there are a lot of things that we do that um, require time um, and um, we don't have user fees for most of what we do. We don't have user fees for counting absentee ballots, for example. Um, and if we did, we would be very, we'd be, we'd be have a great fundraiser. Um, my own view is, is that um, we have never done this before and I think it's a very interesting time to start given that the number of candidates that they're going to be. Um, I don't think we should um, be adding additional costs for people running for office. Um, I think that providing them with the names of people who are voting by absentee, we provide it on an equal basis to everybody. Um, and, um, and the amount of revenue we're talking about here is, I think, a total of $1,500 for, 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 for our budget. Um, that strikes me as being part of what we do. Um, and so um, I, I would not support charging for it. I absolutely agree, Mr. President. It's, uh, it's uh, certainly not the time to start instituting user fees. I don't understand what you mean about not the time. When taxes. The time? Uh, I mean, it, it, <laughs> in the time of, of discussions for adding on fees and increasing fees or increasing taxes, uh, I, I think this is out of step with um, uh, with that that okay. feeling, I would and like to object to you saying taxes because this is a choice. It's a candidate tax. It's a choice. It's a candidate tax. But it's a choice. It, they don't have to get them. Well, you know, and right, I think you have, have to. I also <laughs> think when it comes to elections, you have to be very careful and very sensitive when you start uh, uh, requiring candidates to pay for things that. We, as a board of elections, are charged to to provide to the citizenry uh, of the county, and that we've been providing for free, and that we have been yeah. forever. Did, forever. Does your proposal include the central committees? Would they have to pay? Of course. Anybody who requested an absentee? Is this part of the law, or is this something just that the board has done? The Montgomery County boards are always done. It sounds but to me like the other local boards just say go to the state. Okay. Yeah, as a former candidate myself, I'm, I'm sympathetic to what David and Marianne say, but uh, <laughs> I mean, it's been a service I've run a number of times, and it's it's a very important service to the candidate because when someone puts in for an absentee ballot, you know they're going to vote. So that's a crucial component of campaigning. But they can get it from the state. Correct. Am I correct? For you 75. Are correct. For 75. So this is the, yes. so we're giving giving it to them cheaper. Right. I mean, if yeah, it was free. Mm -hmm. It was free, you know. But uh, right now, as of yesterday, I think 17 candidates have filed for the Democratic nomination for so county send council. Them to state. Then. Let them do it. And <clears throat> 75. Yeah, I mean, it it almost uh, looks like you know. A little bit of a windfall here for uh, for the board. I, uh, I, I it, it it doesn't pass the smell test with me, to be frank. I mean, if if 25 candidates ask for it, the work the work product though is only one time. No, it's yeah. every every. No, no, I mean, but it, it really doesn't matter how many ask for it in terms of the work we have That's to do. That's correct. Mm-hmm. Well, maybe there ought to be a way that you prepare it so anybody who wants it can get it at a defined time, but you don't do it separately for each person who asks. I, I don't know. I mean, that would reduce the staff time. No, if one candidate asks for it, separately. one candidate asks for it, or 30 candidates, yeah. it's the same it's amount the same of work material. for general. It's the same volume. Yeah. Yeah. So how, does, what, how, do, how would like how would the board wish to proceed on this? Are you in favor? I guess my first question is: 
do you want to just lay this over and call it a day? Table it? I mean, I'm sympathetic to the candidates because the sacrifices no, they, they make, but that's a personal that. feeling. I have. How about they don't do anything, just send them to state, let the state give them the information? Then they'd have to but pay they, for it. Then they'd have to pay. Yeah, no, uh, I, I don't see any point in, in putting it aside, uh, Mr. President. I, I'll, I'll go ahead and make a motion that we uh, continue with the uh, process that has always been in place uh, by the board uh, to provide the labels in uh, the current system. And if it gets too long, we'll send them to the state. For free. I'll second that. What was that, Jackie? I'm sorry. I said if it gets too onerous, if there's too much, that it backs up other processes here, send them to the state. Any other discussion? Okay. So the question. Okay. The question well, is, actually, Mr. Uh, President, I guess I would, if we're going to maintain the status quo, it doesn't seem to me that we need a motion to continue that. Because okay. we've decided, you know, it looks like there's not a consensus to change things. I mean, yeah, I don't know. Right. I guess I could go either way on this. I don't, I don't feel that strongly about it, but uh, I'm not sure we need the motion if we're not going to change what we yeah. continue to do. Okay. So we're, we're going to well, keep it the same. So but now there is you, a motion are, 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 on the are, are, table. Are you okay with that? It, I mean, is, there, uh, is the issue settled then? I mean, I this says proposed fee. Uh, I made a motion to not accept uh, you know, the proposal to change the process. Which I second. And it was seconded, so. We can take a vote. All those in favor of Mary Ann's motion to keep the present procedure that the candidates get these labels for free, say aye. 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 Opposed? I will abstain. Thank you. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> going on further. Um, we have voter registration, monthly uh, stats were posted. We have uh, 647,890 active and pending voters. Uh, Jessica White is in training, and MD Voters was upgraded recently. Um, regarding the State Board of Elections, I wish to remind you that uh, the biennial meeting is on Monday, October 23rd. The agenda was in the attachment of the advanced packet. I did attend the state board meeting uh, last month and uh, listened in on the express vote discussion and I'll discuss about that further in the meeting. Um, SBE staff resubmitted for the third time for a possible bid the, app, the mailing of the absentee ballots um, from a one, one vendor. Uh, the election director's meeting was held, and probably the most important bit of information that I received was that uh, while there is an RFP, which I believe closed by now, related to the email delivery of the ballot uh, to absentee voters, um, as I understood it, uh, the full cost of that uh, system will be borne by the local boards that choose to participate instead of the normal um, plan split of 50-50. And I believe that there were several board members that had talked to Mr. Manolato about uh, that uh, system, uh, and I don't know if, if this was the plan or not. Um, additionally, the Spanish Translation Committee met, and Herberto and Joyce heard around Haran attended, and Alberto is going to provide us an update under old business and legislation. Um, uh, the approved the 2018 absentee application, and now we're waiting for the Spanish translation from the state vendor. And legislation uh, staff did reach out to Delegate Lukey uh, regarding the legislation he uh, introduced. Allison informed me this afternoon that uh, he withdrew the legislation. Mm. <clears throat> okay. That's good. Uh, board attorney report? Sure. Uh, with regard to Judicial Watch, I got a call from uh, Judicial Watch's counsel that he had an uh, argument in another case and requested an extension of time to respond to our motion to dismiss and the motion to dismiss filed by the state. It's going to be filed on the 27th or 28th of October under the Maryland rules, we'll then have 
14 days, and the federal rules 14 days to file a reply memorandum. And it's unclear whether Judge Hollander will have a hearing. Probably not, given it's just a pure legal issue. But we probably won't get another. We probably won't get the decision for three or four more months. In terms of the MOUs, I have drafted one in preparation for the boards in anticipation of the board's vote today on the early voting. I will plug in the alternates and some of the other changes. That will need to go to Mark Hanson, the county attorney, who then vets it through Montgomery County. So they'll sign off on one of them. I've sent one already, a draft to Lynn Board in the city of Gaithersburg for Ballard Park. A draft has been sent for review and comment to St. Catherine. They're going to have to send it through the Archdiocese Legal Council. And I said, you know, you don't need to do anything until the board votes today. But once the board has voted, then we'll have to get those finalized, which I think we'll be able to do in the next 30 to 60 days. And then there'll be the MOU for Sandy Springs. Sandy Springs, yeah. We'll get that done in the next 30 days. Kevin, have any third parties joined the lawsuit one way or the other on the judicial watch? No. No, it's been pretty quiet. Okay. Update of the utilist. Mr. President, can I go on to old business? Sure. Okay. Update of the utilization of the school facilities as a polling place. Margaret, before you begin, you know, could you start, like, at the bottom line? Like, where we are now from the last letter, how many voters do we have to move? In other words, can you bottom line me just to start the conversation? Okay. I sent Chris put together this graph for you. I guess 22,000. Okay. Chris put together this graph for you. And so at the very top, you have the six facilities, I'm sorry, seven facilities that there are construction closure issues in which there will be 22,377 individuals that will have to move. Additionally, then we have the miscellaneous change issues where we're moving voters from outside of their precinct in 2-6 to a location within their precinct. So that would be 2-6, 2-8. We're moving some of the voters from Meadow Hall Elementary School to the Twin Brook Recreation Center because of ballot split issues. Ballot slippages? We had, up until this election, we had combined voting, and you could have numerous ballot styles at a location. And so at Burnt Mills, I'm sorry, Spring Brook High School and Meadow Hall Elementary School, they had a combined precinct. This will separate out the precinct so that the same ballot style will be voted at this new location, Burnt Mills Elementary and Twin Brook Recreation. Only Swim Center is under construction and will not be made available. So we'll have William H. Farquhar Middle School. And then Tacoma Park Center, as everyone agreed that they wanted that split back out to 13, it will become 13-68, the Don Bosco Cristo Rey High School. So that middle group has nothing to do with the school construction? No, nothing to do with school. The next one is the chillers. And with the portable air conditioners, we met with general services. I saw David myself, and we set up a meeting with regards to several issues that our department works with general services on. They have five portable chillers. The staff of the Department of General Services will visit the five schools in the multipurpose room to determine the level of utilization that is necessary to cool each room and the electrical demand of the chillers with our voting equipment. And then once they get done with that analysis, they plan to come back to us and give us their findings in 
terms of whether or not the five chillers that the state that the county currently owns will be adequate and then we need to discuss whether or not we need to lease additional and then once that those that in findings are discovered um, we will report back to the board as well as contact the school system if there's some sort of electrical issue that we need to talk to with the school system so the and oh, then, sorry so the county is going to send people to the uh, is the school system part of this conversation will be well? after mm -hmm. because the county currently owns five right. portable chillers and so they're and they are the individuals that went with us last two years ago when we moved from the touchscreen to the ds200 and uh the express boat to help us in determine the electrical load of the new system so mm -hmm. they will be the uh, and they we will continue to work with the department of general services because if we use the chillers we will use the county chillers first before we pay to lease any chillers they will be working with school system staff at each of these locations That's when they go out yes. well, I'll sit. Oh, i'm sorry no no go ahead no, so this last group on the bottom with the chillers, right. is the Board mm -hmm. of Education on board that we can use them? Because remember in his letter he said we need to come up with money? Well, we he said that because we'd have to lease them. And the county has informed me that they have five chillers. And it's okay we, with the Board of Education to well, use them? We're, 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 yeah, the, at this point, we have to go out and investigate uh, if the chillers that this county currently owns are large enough to cool the room as well as determine the electrical load that these chillers would place on the facility. So, so we're not going to have a final answer until next month. And, and our staff is part of that conversation. Yeah, that's what I want to know. Yeah. Who does yes. that? Because obviously we have to be able to tell the state that it works or it doesn't. Right, we yeah. will. Yeah. So, Morgan, will so as we sit here now, us. as we sit here, it looks like we definitely have to move 22377 Correct. But we could be moving an extra 16373 And there's a back no. page. No. No, Seven I don't more. think so. Mike, do you have any, any, any insight into the chiller being... Mr. Dice is having his staff meet with school system staff um, as to doing additional chillers. Um, and he's asking to move our chillers over to theirs because they're big trailers. Right. So it would be a question of the electrical load, although I would imagine they've got generators and the school's air conditioning units will be off, so there will be a reduction on that. Plus, they could probably, if the school's closed, nobody's in there, uh, close off the electricity to a number of other spots. So I don't think that that will be a determining factor. But Margaret, if the chillers are used, then the 2016 polling places would be the polling places. Yes, for that's correct. Mm -hmm. Right. And then on the back side is the three polling places that we will return back to their home precinct. So um, this was just normal activity. Right. This yeah. is normal activity. So the polling places that would be moved, if if the chillers work, uh, so we'd return to the 2016 polling places on the third grouping. So we would have to move the 22,377 individuals because of school construction and then the other miscellaneous changes for county construction, uh, request by uh, other interested parties to move, so it would be 16,400. So one of the things that <coughs> I uh, have been working on because I know how concerned board members are with regards to the number of individuals we're required so if we were to go forward with these changes as we'll have to in some instances um, we're required by Comar and state law to notify voters approximately 30 days after we make the changes so that would mean that either late December or early January depending on uh, the GIS interface and the name changes and everything. We would mail out the typical voter notification form. We would put on there, you know, what the reason is that polling, we would put the phrase, um, 
because we're restricted the way the system works with uh, MD voters, we would have to put polling place change. Is that the correct phrase that they give us? Polling place change. On the VNC, the voter right. verification. Right, okay. So then, um, in order to uh, try to get our message across again, um, this is just in development, and I'm, so I'm going to ask for these back. I only have four of them. I need one now. Um, what I would like to do is send out at the end of April, at the end of April, to all of the registered voters. And what this would do is this would be an alert that says mm -hmm. this is your polling place change. And you would open it up and it would say, alert, your polling place has changed. And if you voted at Ashburton Elementary School, you're now going to Davis Library. It has a picture of Davis Library. It says the polling place location was changed because Montgomery County Public Schools had construction project. It says that in Spanish. And then at the bottom it has a picture of the precinct as well as that you can verify that your voter registration information is correct and up to date and it has the state's website. Then finally we're also required by Comar and state law to go to all of the polling places whether there's construction or dirt or whatever where we had to move and we will put signs there that say um, if you voted here at Ashburton School today on June 26 you will vote at the Davis Library. So there will be three attempts and of course then there will be the sample ballot that Allison will be sending out that will also have it won't have that it's a new polling place, but it will have that it's an, uh, Your a change. Uh, it'll have the name of the new polling place there. Okay, now, Mary Ann has taught me well. Are you going to put on the front, <laughs> if you don't live here, send this back to us? <laughs> sure. <Or> words <laughs> <laughs> If yeah. you're dead, well, if you're dead, <laughs> please send this back immediately. We certainly will uh, put whatever the requirements are for a return yeah. uh, address. Correction. Uh, I'll, I'll work with Jessica White on what, like I said, this is a draft. Um, next month we will um, bring it back to you for your review. This is something we've never done before, but I felt that with all of the changes that, the number of changes, that mm -hmm. this would address some of the concerns. Mm -hmm. And I have to, uh, School and I do bigger. have to follow the Comar guidelines with regards to sending out that voter notification form. And I realized that probably in January, nobody's really thinking about an election in June. And so it gets tossed. And I think this uh, visually might at least get them to open it up. Mm -hmm. I think it looks great to have all the voting yeah. place on there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm very impressed. Great. Great. I like the reason we're moving to be bigger. <laughs> Any <laughs> questions? Call Jim Show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do the school construct. You know. Uh, I'll, I'll see if I can get that baseball bat a little bigger. If you could say, give it back to your mailman or something where they they don't think they have I, to mail it. Yeah. Give it back. I have. I'll have to uh, abide by the post office regulations also. Regarding the, the first uh, notification uh, and following the Comar uh, regulation, um, I, you mentioned late December or early January. Uh, let, let's try to make it January and yeah. not get in yeah. a mess of holiday mail. We, we okay. do. We, that's what we do. Okay. Yeah. I okay. Think, <coughs> I come. Go ahead. I think I'll, first, I think it's a great idea. I'm glad that I'm glad that you're doing it. I, I had a couple of questions about some of the polling place changes. Would this be an appropriate time to Yeah, I think so. Um, I don't recall and perhaps you can remind me, I thought that we had not made decisions, final decisions on the actual changes for the schools because we weren't sure which ones we were gonna have to move and which ones we were not making any changes until next month. Oh, okay. excellent. So that being the case, then all I want, all I have are two suggestions, one of which I think I made before, but if I didn't, um, I'm going to make it now. Um, that is for Precinct 417, 
um, Lux Manor Elementary School to give consideration to, to yeah, which is Mary Ann's precinct, <laughs> uh, give consideration to locating it at Tilden Center, which is where 418 currently votes. I believe that it's in the same districts of all kinds, but um, it's also very close to the old polling place. You can almost see them from each other, um, as opposed to having to cross Old Georgetown Road to get to another polling place. Um, and for Precinct 1338, um, which is the Kensington Parkwood Elementary School, currently listed as Silver Creek Middle School, please uh, look into the Cedar Lane Unitarian Church, which is in the precinct walking distance for people who... I, um, I'm glad there. you brought that up because yeah. I, I remembered you had an issue with that and I... So I looked into the history of 1338. The last time we voted at Cedar Lane Unitarian Church was 2010 and, um, and Chris, Chris comes to me when she has issues with you know all of the changes. Uh, Cedar Lane Unitarian Church had at that time in 2010 1,326 voters. Um, Kensington Park has 4,373 voters. Chris's concern is that church is not large enough to accommodate all of those voters. And the other church that we looked at, and Christ, is it Christ, Christ King? Christ Episcopal. Christ Episcopal. We have significant ADA issues. And um, we can go back there, we can bring in more pictures and show you what our concerns are. But it, is, it the bu is it the building or the parking or? The, in, at, with at the Christ end? King? Either one, Christ both of them. Cedar, Cedar Lane is just too small. You cannot have 4,000 voters at that location. It's just too small. Uh, the ADA, we can bring the pictures in and show them to you next month. Okay, great. The, okay. the ADA, the uh, staff at Christ is welcoming. They say that they'd be glad to have us, but they warn us about the uh, ADA. For instance, when you get into the elevator, it's very small. It probably will only hold a wheelchair, and for someone to escort that person probably would be close to impossible. Wow. If the person should accidentally knock a certain point in the elevator, it stops the elevator. Ooh. So <laughs> the, uh, there are significant issues as okay. far as ADA goes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. But we'll bring those issues to you next month. Great. Thank you. Okay. All right. Um, going on to the next one. You, and you received, everyone received a copy of the letter from the superintendent, right? Superintendent. And I just, yeah, let me just throw out to the board because this is really a concern to me. Does, do we want to do anything proactive, get ahead of this? Uh, because I really don't want the voters to blame us for all these moves. This is not our fault <laughs> that all these voters are being moved. And in today's political climate, we're going to get blamed for moving all these voters. It's, I mean, it's but I'm just here. saying, no, I'm to, no, no, I'm, no we're going we're to do what we have to do, but people, are, there's going to be accusations of voter suppression against the board here. Not it, really. Well, they, you know, people, you move so many voters. Well, but I, we, I we have greatly uh, reduced this, Mr. President. No, I know, I mean, no, I'm just saying. Be from where we started uh, with, uh, what, 70,000? And I think it's wonderful. Talk about, uh, you brought this to the forefront, not just to us, but to the, but to the, the, the Board of Election, uh, uh, Education too, and I think it's wonderful. Do you have, I agree with you, do you have, I, yesterday was with some people that were asking me about issues on the board that five years ago had never even heard of us. Um, mm. And I am very concerned. Stuff has happened, things have happened to bring us to people, the forefront of people's thoughts. Would you, ha, do you have some suggestions about what we could do? Well, is it, just an, another concern I have is Let's say there's 23 candidates running for county council at large. Some losing candidate is going to say, I lost because you moved people from my base. Yes. Some of We're going my to be, voters a candidate's going to come after us, minimum. And there's going to be accusations of voter suppression in today's political climate. So my, my thing is, do we want to get ahead of this? I.e., can we go, go to the press, get the governor's office involved? In other words, do we want to get in front of this? 
as opposed to being defensive, like we're moving well, because we have to. Once, you know. once That's you what. make a decision, you certainly can uh, put out a press release that says, because of the school system's uh, construction schedule, um, that this this is going to occur. We are, as for potential litigation, our office will have made five, four mailings to each individual voter. And we are, uh, prior to this meeting, I told Chris to send a notification to every filed candidate and office holder that a discussion was going to be held today related to the polling places and that they can visit their website. Okay. And next month, as part of the notification process, uh, Margie will also include a notification that the board will be acting on polling place changes at the board meeting. I, I, also, no, that's an excellent. I also think we need to be very careful. Um, we don't want, in my opinion, sure. I, don't, I don't want to put a press release out there that says that something has been done because of the Board of Education's construction projects. I think the Board yeah. of Education has been extremely cooperative yeah. with the yeah. Board of Elections. Yeah. And I think that it is no one's fault if you're trying to put blame somewhere. Um, the date of the election poses problems. Mm -hmm. right. The school system only has a limited amount of time to make significant repairs to their facilities. And I think the fact that we've been able to get this list from what was it, 70 some thousand That's down it. to 30,000, yeah. mm -hmm. I think is, is a testament to how well they're working with us. So I agree with Margie. I, I think Probably that, true, yeah. you know, I think sometimes when you, when you put something out there in advance, you're calling attention to something that really may not be a problem after all. Voters are used to having to be moved for a variety of reasons. Do we like to do it? Absolutely not. Do we minimize the number? Absolutely. But I, I think we just need to, I mean, I would recommend just letting it play out. Mm -hmm. If the media starts calling me and screaming at me, then maybe I'll change my tune. But I, I don't envision that happening. It's never happened before, and we've certainly cha you know, changed large numbers before. But we're, I, we're in a I different have, political climate. Well, think I about understand this also, that. Got this, this piece that they're designing. Yeah. We've passed around that's going to go out to people, right? I know. I just, yeah. I just, for, I think in today's political climate. I, I have another thought on it too, and I know my business is that <coughs> you write whatever it is, a, a, a press release, a letters to the editor, how, whatever the form is, saying we're having to change the number. And thanks to the wonderful cooperation of the school board or the chair of the school, the superintendent, however that we're, we've reduced the numbers significantly, but we're still going to have due to a, two or three unusual circumstances, but that you praise the cooperation you've got, no, no, but that. say it's happening and you will be receiving things in the mail, please look for them. And if you put that out ahead of time, then hopefully four people or some will look for the mailing and it, it, it sort of puts together every thing that, that's being said. Yes. Yeah, Mike and then Dave. Yeah. Thank you. A couple Mike. things. First of all, Margie, I do agree, disagree a little bit. The legislature's fault. Yeah. It's not your fault. It's not the school system's fault. It's the legislature's fault because they didn't say. think through this. So, but that said, you know, I'd like to go on record saying from the first time I called Dr. Smith, until he went through with his staff the several iterations, he was extremely accommodating. Uh, never any hesitancy. You know, I'll meet with my staff, I'll meet with y'all, and we'll get through it. You know, with, with the exception, I think, of the, the HVAC schools, and that's, that's fixable, this issue really is no different than it's going to be every election. You are always going to have schools uh, that are under construction. And knowing the pressures that the school board has, that schedule is not going to change for modernization. So they're always going to be there. There'll, there'll be some iterations, some differences, but basically, with the exception of those HVAC schools, 
it's easier to change as some of those schedules um, the primary were earlier but that's only going to be if you're lucky in their head ahead on the, their construction so I don't think there's a there's a problem Mr. president okay. um, and it certainly isn't at the foot of uh, board of elections yeah, but I just don't want the voters to blame us. No, I think we're Well, because we're the, we're the, we're the, we're the, we're the, we used to vote at Brown <laughs> Station. And Brown Station was moved to Thurgood Marshall, which is, you know, you've got to go all around like this to get there. And it had no real impact. Dave? Um, a couple things. First, I want to agree with this reaction. Uh, the same can be said for Mike Durso from the very first moment I spoke with him. He was very interested in helping us out. Um, secondly, for those of you who don't know, we have a member of the Board of Education who's sitting here, although she's not here to talk about this issue, that's Rebecca Smondrowski. Um, so so um, don't say anything bad about the Board of Education. <laughs> no, no. And, 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 in, and in fact, we have nothing. Yeah. And in fact, we have, and in, and in fact, we have, we have, we have nothing, nothing, uh, nothing bad to say. Um, I think we'll have the opportunity as time goes on to see whether you know what kind of what kind of reaction we get. Um, in my mind, the the one remaining thing that we can do and that we may not have to do, but we can do next month, is if the chillers that the um, that the county government is providing don't do the job and we need to request additional funding, um, then we can we we can um, you know as a board decide to do that next month. As I told Jim, I did have a conversation with Mike Durso about that, um, and my sense from talking with him is that the school system um, would be amenable to going with us to request that additional funding. So um, hopefully it's not necessary, um, but if it is, that's the one remaining thing that, 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 that we can do about the, the, the 16,000 voters in, in, that, in that category. No, I think what you said earlier, Margaret, is good. If the candidates get an early heads up on this, that's important because somebody's going to lose by 22 votes, and they're going to say, "This is why I lost." It's going to happen. I'm telling you. That's, you know what? Candidates I mean, always have but a you know reason what I'm saying. for why they lost. I lost oh, because yeah. you moved the uh, you moved the Smith High School where that's my those are my people. <laughs> you I lost. <laughs> my people, Margaret. Would you just be sure when they register to book to vote? I mean, to, to run for candidate, that they get a sheet of paper in all of their papers that say, talk about this. Well, quite a few people have already filed. Yeah. And we did send a notification about this and have directed them to our polling place. And right. Chris, you had something you wanted to say? Well, historically, when I think back at the different charts we've done for each cycle, this number that I computed. Chris, stand up, your voice. Historically, after thinking about the different charts that we've done over the different cycles, when I compute what potentially we have to look at for numbers, this number is low considering other elections. I'm um, looking at 38,777 voters could potentially be impacted, and I consider that much lower than we've done in the past. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. uh, Jim, when it was redistricting, I mean, yeah. there were it's, people were moved all over the place. Yeah. yeah. I know, I just, but today's yeah. political climate is well, different. Yeah. We talk about no, the past. Really and you cut this in half. I think you're to be commended for oh, But I'm just saying, the political okay. climate is, yeah, it's, a, it's rough out there. And it's, okay. Uh, I agree. I'm right. right. glad yeah. you aren't running. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, going on to the ballot marking device, I did attend the state board meeting. Um, they did receive input from three different persons. Uh, Richard Tyler for Jim Shea for governor opposed the expansion use, expansion of the use of the express bus. And four persons, I'm sorry, four persons testified. Um, then uh, the na a representative from the National Federation of the Blind, public policy director for People on the Go, and the director of legal advocacy for the disability rights of Maryland. Um, they wanted to see the expanded use of the uh, express vote and want every voter informed that they uh, are allowed to use that. Um, and then the discussion focused on, there was considerable discussion, focused on where the name appeared uh, on the second or third page 
of the ballot marking device. <coughs> uh, one of the members brought up the fact that um, we had 17 candidates for an open seat uh, for county council, and there were no further comments. So at this time, that uh, the board, state board, will is entertaining more comments on the express vote or the ballot marking device in this October meeting, and then they'll make their decision. Now, it's interesting, uh, today in the uh, election line blog, uh, it was announced that Georgia is going to, is test driving the ballot marking device for a s small election, and that's something they're looking at for the entire state. Different than ours? No, it's the exact same. Okay. And the for the whole I state. But yeah, but it's today, the the election on November 7th is a test drive. So I don't know how quickly the Georgia legislature is going to move on that. So, so what is under discussion right now by, by the state board on this there is the expansion of it or to keep the policy as it was in 2016. That you just have to have X number of people vote on the machine. Right. So the bottom line is there's not going to be any change. I, I don't know that. <laughs> State Board will tell us in probably December or January. Um, then a uh, request had been made by uh, the Republican Chair, Mr. Jagina, to the State Board of Elections to develop a report from MD voters on monthly changes of the voter registry. The State Board staff advised me that the request will be submitted or has been submitted at, at this point. Um, but may not be completed until 2019 or 2020. No. Okay, and then under old business, I just meant to, I wanted to include that we had two public events, uh, Jim Shalek, Mary Ann, I, and Nikki Charlson of the State Board staff attended a public meeting sponsored by the League of Women Voters that was talking about the latest trends. But did they wow them? Election yes. administration. <laughs> the, I was there, they would. Our, the particular focus was on security issues as it related to the voter registration system and the voting system. And I did send you a copy of the New York Times article that appeared yesterday. And then we had our National Voter Registration Day event, and that was very successful. Uh, we had our citizenship ceremony, and uh, we had it was a very moving experience for Jim and I. Not a, and not a dry pictures, eye. Thanks to Allison. Pictures. Mm -hmm. uh, were posted on Facebook, um, and uh, then the, there you go, Roberto. Yes. Under old business, do you want to talk about Spanish? What? So, uh, well, it's kind of. There is a small committee to look at the Spanish language glossary. We had an internal glossary that we used. Uh, for outreach and flyers, etc. Um, but then we combine what the state uses when they de develop their contest headers for their ballots. Um, they also included contest headers that are not particular specific to Montgomery County, uh, such as Hagerstown and, uh, and other jurisdictions in Eastern Shore and Western Maryland. Uh, we met twice, so we've merged and developed one glossary. Um, we took in consideration uh, during the first meeting, I established the census numbers and the population of the Hispanic community, but also the particular, the particulars, whether it's Central American, Caribbean, or uh, South American, Mexico. Um, once that was established, we looked at uh, Montgomery County specifically, the larger community is the Central American community, um, but taking in consideration Puerto Ricans, Dominicans, etc. cetera. Um, last week we met, we finalized that glossary. We're going to meet next week, and we're going to look at the signage that is used and generated by the State Board of Elections for our precincts. Um, the consideration I made and recommendations to the committee is, in addition, when identifying uh, the company that does the translation, they need to take it a step further to identify the individual who's actually going to do the translation for said company, um, because they can they could give them the contract, but they could vet it out to someone else within the company. And if their background is more formally, if they do more translation services, let's say west of the Mississippi, that's predominantly Mexican, Mexican-American. 
um, if you do more east, uh, the eastern, uh, above the mid-Atlantic, New York, Ohio, New Jersey is predominantly Caribbean, Puerto Rican, Dominicans. Um, so I'm taking into consideration the mid-Atlantic, which is predominantly Central Americans, and so I made that recommendation to take it a step further if they do develop an RFP and if they work with the contractor to identify the individual who actually is doing the translations, including a copy of uh, their experience in their resume. So I'm extremely curious to see exactly what are their backgrounds. Uh, so the glossary alone won't take care of the issue? No, no, because of the context of what they're translating. So it's an interesting, well, a page in English is usually a page and a half in Spanish. And depending who's translating the document, whether it's a press advisor, a flyer, or a poster, mm -hmm. um, you may have to justify sizes, fonts. You know, a normal font in English could be a smaller font in Spanish if you want to look at a context of, let's say, a signage. So you got to take that into consideration. Um, but yes, so it really depends on, on the, the individual, who's translating, their, and also their experience, and who they've translated for. So the issue that you really uh, brought to bear on this, it sounds to me, I was at the state board meeting when this issue came up from a uh, member of Prince George's County mm -hmm. Board, who I believe is Puerto Rican. Yes. And he was upset that the translations weren't mm -hmm. what he would have wanted, you know, type of thing. And so I, I thought that that was basically what your committee was going to try yes. to work out. And that gentleman is on the committee. Mm -hmm. um, so Mr. Saldana? Uh, uh, yes. Yeah. Hi, Mr. Saldana, yes. So he's on the committee. Um, when we developed the glossary, our internal team, uh, Stella, Michelle, um, Joyce C., and myself, um, we looked at the glossary. Um, Mr. Saldana uh, presented his kind of recommendations. We looked at his recommendations. Either we agree or disagree. If we disagree, then we basically put it on a table and we discuss it, similar to what you guys did here as a quorum. And then we looked at census, recognition, recognizing the population, um, and also the trends. Um, so there was a, a lot of um, give and take, but I could, I could attest that he was very, very um, open to suggestions. Okay. So, and we, we got the glossary done. Okay. That's great. And this is for translation of uh, abs the absentee ballots, the, uh, the yes. sample ballots, everything that we send out. Well, yeah, like the terminology. Yeah. So, like a uh, ballot, uh, most commonly used as papeleta uh, from kind of the east of the Mississippi. If you go west of the Mississippi, is boleta. So, boleta <laughs> for the Central American community, that's like an airline ticket. It's a little bit different. Yeah. Yeah. And, and in the past, some of our materials and some of Prince George's County's materials, have, we've used one and Prince George's County mm -hmm. has used the other. Yeah, yeah. And we did use the EAC uh, glossary that they developed. I was on a committee when we went to New Mexico. Um, it is a good starting point, but it's, it's not in stone. Um, so we did leverage that when needed, and we did take the art encyclopedia, the Real Academia Española, and we, you know, we discussed it. Um, uh, ad nauseum, and then we got a we got one glossary, one list prepared. Good. All right. Thanks. Cool. Thank you, Bear, Do you want to talk about outreach real fast? Oh yes. Fast. Fast. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So um, so as of today, we've completed 100. And, well, since the 5th of January, um, 158 completed events. We have on the books 36 confirmed events that we have on our books to conduct starting from tomorrow moving forward. Um, we have seven pending, so I'm waiting from the organizer. Um, we were rejected 17 times, and it's not necessarily the interest wasn't for us to be there. It didn't fit their event, like if it's like a health fair um, or uh, an event regarding early childhood. Um, but we still ask. Um, and we've had 18 cancellations, either because the facility wasn't available, other circumstances beyond our control, for a total of 236 opportunities. Um, so we're, we're on goal to do a lot uh, in the community. You bring the voting machines to work? Yes, depending. If it's outdoors, we don't because the weather's so fickle. The next stage now, since the weather's kind of turning, we're going to focus on indoor, and that's where we're going to be very aggressive uh, demonstrating the equipment. Okay. Good. Um, I have no new business. And Dave? Uh, is it okay for a new business? Yeah. New business? Yes, new business. Yes, yeah. new business. Um, I, I have uh, two things of new business. One, um, 
Jim, we spoke about before, um, which is it was uh, uh, it was great to be able to attend. Uh, I attended both the League of Women Voters event and the uh, the citizenship ceremony. Um, the citizenship ceremony, obviously, we heard about at this table. The League of Women Voters event, um, I learned about from a member of the League of Women Voters, and I think it would have been of interest to all the board members. And so, to the extent that um, we can learn about such things in advance, I think it would be um, very helpful. Um, related to that, um, the, both the, the school board and the county council have a system by which, when they receive um, any kind of correspondence is addressed to them generally, all the members automatically get a copy without waiting for the, the, the providing officer to, to take action. And I just hope we would consider doing something like that. Yeah, everybody should get notified. Yeah, when things come up, we should all get notification. Yeah. I don't know how Barbara handled that. Okay. She um, handled it by phone with me. Yeah, she could, yeah. Okay. Um, then my, my second new business item, um, you may recall that I had a new business item at our last meeting um, that um, I'm about to, um, to have a, a sequel to um, relating to the appointment to, uh, to our vacancy. Um, I would like to move that the board president send a letter to the governor uh, requesting that he promptly appoint a successor to fill the substitute member position formerly held by Graciela Rivera Oven. Um, who resigned on July 10th, which is now 14 weeks ago, and the um, Montgomery County Democratic Central Committee submitted its recommendations to the governor 12 weeks ago. Um, when we discussed it a month ago, Jim, you suggested that it was premature, but that it might be ripe this month. Okay. So that's why I'm, I'm, okay. I'm back again. Is there a second? Uh, I will second it for purposes of discussion. Okay. Uh, and I'll be happy to discuss at whatever yeah. time I... Yeah, go ahead. Uh, I am somewhat on record, I think, for this type of thing, not this specifically, but um, I, just as I opposed uh, our sending a letter to the superintendent uh, a, a month ago, although it's... Uh, Mr. Naiman pointed out I was not at that meeting. However, I was privy to getting uh, the uh, uh, draft of the letter uh, and uh, learn of the circumstance of it. Um, I just don't think that uh, badgering, if you will, uh, these people uh, in you know offices that uh, that we are you know working with. Uh, to say, you know, nagging them, if you will, you know, when are we going to hear, what are we going to do, as I understand it, uh, from your response in the minutes uh, that I read from last month, you had, had. Uh, reached out to the governor's office and they had it under consideration. Uh, you know, I, I, I don't think it gets you anywhere to uh, to say, well, what are you doing? Why haven't we heard? Uh, subsequent to our last uh, board meeting, uh, the League of Women Voters sent uh, a letter uh, as, as, to, as a result of our discussion to the uh, to the governor's office. So you know, they've heard, uh, uh, they're hearing from it. They, you know, they had an inquiry from. Uh, from our board president, they had the letter from the uh, league. Uh, I I don't think we should be in the position of uh, you know going forward as, as a board to say, hey, you know, uh, what are you doing? Dave, um, first of all, let me say that it's definitely not my intent to badger the governor or anybody else. Um, what? Um, the reason why I think it's important for us to be on record is that I think that it's important to our work to, to, for us to be fully represented. Um, and I mean, there's a reason why our board has more members than other uh, than other county boards do. Um, and um, I, um, um, I, I guess I, I, I disagree with um, the idea that um, our having said something six weeks ago. Um, now that it's been as long as it has been, um, Nahid said at the last meeting, as you as as, uh, it was 12 as weeks, Mike. Right, and three it's times now. four. Okay, it's 12 okay. Weeks. okay, well, and, and, and nobody complained, even I didn't know I didn't even attend the meeting. 
You guys ever seen me? No? Okay. Well, um, I, 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 would, uh, I would suspect that, um, I, I, know, I know from experience that when you bring things to people's attention, it does get their attention. Um, and um, I would say that in this instance, um, um, it has gone on for a very long period of time. We made some very important decisions today without being, without being a full board, and we're going to have very important decisions to make next month as well. Um, and so, um, anyway, I would suggest that uh, it would be appropriate for us to let them know. Um, we uh, easily could have uh, not had a meeting last month. Um, as a result of not having that position filled, and I think that that would have been uh, very inconvenient for a lot of people. Why not having? Why? Why? We Last month, Marianne missed the meeting. Okay. Um, which one? One Which she does not do often. Uh, ever. Um, but, ever. But but if but not well, often ever. Okay, fine. So, so <laughs> um, but. But um, by virtue, I mean, basically, you all um, were, you all were stuck with, you know, if I show up, you have a meeting, and if I don't show up, you don't have a meeting, and um, it's not the way it's supposed to work. However, I presume if you weren't going to be here, you, you would have informed people, and that had not been the case. So I don't think they were in jeopardy of not having a quorum. Uh, Mr. President, I, I would like to join Mary Ann's uh, comments. I agree with them, and I think if there was a real danger. We could not have met. Uh, you probably would have tried to make arrangements to, to reschedule to another date if, if some emergency came up. Look, I uh, part of my business is to try to convince judges to rule in my favor. I think only once in my career have I ever, you know, sent a, a motion or a letter like this to ask a judge why he hadn't decided my motion, and it ended badly. I don't do it anymore. That's <laughs> uh, sad. Glad you only did it once. <laughs> uh, so so for those reasons, I uh, I would oppose the motion. There are where I come from. Yeah, I oppose. Okay. All right. So we're going to vote on the uh, David's motion. All those in favor of sending a letter to the governor, say aye. Aye. All those opposed. Aye. aye. That's four, four to one. Okay. Any new other new business? No. Okay, we need a motion. I to move uh, the agenda. Is, Is there a second? Should adjourn and move into executive yeah. session? Yeah. Second. Oh, I move we go to the executive session. Second. Uh, second. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so we're going to go into executive session. Okay, now I move we accept the executive committee, <laughs> executive meeting. Executive session minutes. minutes. For the last, for the, which, what's the date of those? Uh, last month, 18. September 18. September 18. Executive, executive. Is there a second? Second. second. Is there any discussion? I'm going to sleep. All those in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. No one opposed. Okay. No, po yeah. Oh, my favorite. I move the agenda. Mm -hmm. Okay. Wait, we, we need will. a second. Second. No, second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 No one opposed.